Hello there friend, welcome to our restaurant. My name is Ashley, and I'll be your server for today. Are you ready to place your order? Hi, Ashley. Yes, I am ready to order. Can you please recommend some delicious dishes from the menu? Sure, how about trying our famous jambalaya, or gumbo? They are both traditional dishes here in New Orleans, and are definitely a must-try. That sounds great. Can I also have some fried catfish and collard greens? Definitely. Those are also tasty choices. Would you like anything to drink with your meal? Yes, I would like a cold beer, please. Of course. Our beer selection includes a variety of locally brewed options. Anything specific you would like to try? How about the Abita Amber Ale? Excellent choice. Your order will be ready shortly. Is there anything else I can assist you with while you wait? No, thank you. I am excited to taste these delicious dishes. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Oh, while I'm here, would you like to know any fun facts about New Orleans? Sure, I love learning new things. Did you know that New Orleans is nicknamed the Big Easy because of its slow and easygoing lifestyle? Really? I never knew that. That's interesting. Yes, New Orleans is a city rich in culture and history. You'll definitely enjoy it here. I'm looking forward to exploring more of the city after our meal. Thank you for your great service and interesting facts, Ashley. No problem at all. Enjoy your meal and have a great time exploring the city. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 privacy? Yeah, I've read a bit about it. Why, do you need it for work? Yeah, my company is thinking about implementing it. Do you think it's worth the effort? Definitely. It ensures that companies have proper measures in place to protect sensitive data. That sounds like a good idea. But isn't it a lot of work to get certified? It can be, but the benefits outweigh the effort. Plus, it's a great selling point for clients who prioritize data protection. Ah, I see your point. What kind of information does it protect, exactly? ISO 27001 protects any sensitive information from personal data to intellectual property. Got it. So how does it differ from other data privacy certifications? Well, ISO 27001 is an international standard, so it's recognized globally. And it's also unique in that it focuses on risk management rather than just compliance. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Have you worked with companies that have implemented it? Yes, I've seen firsthand how it can benefit a company's reputation and increase customer trust. That's great to hear. Do you have any tips for implementing it successfully? Definitely involve all departments for a comprehensive approach and make sure to thoroughly document processes and procedures. Okay, I'll definitely keep those in mind. Thanks for your input, B. No problem, always happy to help with data protection conversations. Hi there, B. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How about you? Same here. So, I was thinking, how do you ensure the integrity and reliability of software testing? Well, there are a few things we do. First, we make sure to have a test plan in place that covers all the features and functionalities of the software. That sounds reasonable. What else do you do? We also use automated testing tools to increase the accuracy and efficiency of the testing process. That's a great idea. Do you have any specific tools you recommend? For automated testing, I highly recommend Selenium. Got it. And how do you track and manage any bugs that are found during testing? We use bug tracking software, such as Jira, to log and track any issues. Then, we prioritize and assign them to the responsible team member for resolution. That's efficient. What about communication between the testing and development teams? We have daily stand-up meetings to discuss any issues or updates, and we also utilize collaboration tools like Slack and Asana. Makes sense. How do you ensure continuous testing throughout the software development lifecycle? We integrate testing into the development process using Agile methodology so that testing is constantly taking place and new features are thoroughly tested before being released. Agile is a great approach. Do you have any other tips for ensuring software testing is reliable and effective? Just remember to always keep testing a priority and make sure everyone on the team is on the same page with testing processes and procedures. Thanks for the advice, B. It's been great chatting with you about this topic. Likewise, A. Hi there. I heard you are a great landscaper. I am an architect and I am working on a design for a park on a hillside. Can you give me some input on how to achieve a scenic park? Absolutely. I love working with architects. Have you thought about incorporating native plants into the design? 
Not yet, but that sounds like a great idea. What kind of plants would you suggest? Well, for a hillside park, it's important to choose plants that can survive in harsher conditions, like drought-tolerant shrubs and grasses. That makes sense. I'll definitely incorporate that into my design. How about the layout of the park? A winding pathway that curves along the hillside can add a natural, organic feel to the park. You can also use terracing to create different levels and provide seating areas for visitors. I was thinking of adding some water features. Do you think a waterfall would look good in the park? A waterfall sounds beautiful. It can create a tranquil atmosphere and add to the natural scenery. I am also considering installing some solar lights along the pathway. Do you think it would be a good idea? I think it's a great idea. Not only will it help illuminate the path in the evening, but it's also environmentally friendly. That's true. I'm glad you like the idea. Thank you so much for your help. Anytime. It's always a pleasure to collaborate with other professionals. Good luck with your design. Hey, do you ever miss your family and friends back home? Of course. I think about them all the time. How about you? Yeah, it's tough being away from them, especially during the holidays. I know what you mean. I always try to video call or send a care package to show them I'm thinking of them. That's a good idea. I should really do that more often. It's the little things that make a big difference. Have you heard from your mom lately? Yeah, she called me last night. She always makes sure to check up on me and asks if I need anything. Gotta love moms. How about your friends? I've been keeping in touch with my closest friends through social media. It's not the same as seeing them in person, but it's better than nothing. Agreed. I had a long chat with my best friend on WhatsApp the other day, and it made me feel so much better. Yeah, talking to them always puts a smile on my face. I just wish I could give them all hugs right now. Me too. But for now, we'll just have to settle for virtual hugs. Sends a virtual hug there, one for you. Sends a virtual hug back and one for you too. It's not the same, but it's the thought that counts. Definitely. So, what's the first thing you're going to do when you see your family and friends again? Oh, I don't even know where to start. Probably just give them all hugs and catch up on everything I've missed. Same here. And maybe have a big family dinner together. Sounds like a plan. I can't wait. Hey B, have you noticed that there are quite a few bugs in the software we released last week? Yes, I have. I think we should implement better testing strategies to avoid such issues in the future. That's a good idea. We can use automated testing tools to catch those bugs early on. Definitely. We should also pay more attention to user feedback and incorporate their feedback into our development process. I agree. Additionally, we can provide training sessions to our fellow developers to enhance their coding skills. Yes, and we should encourage them to write clean code that is easy to understand and maintain. Absolutely. I also think we can organize internal code reviews and pair programming sessions to identify any potential issues before they make it to production. Great suggestion. We should also keep track of our software metrics to measure our progress and identify areas that need improvement. Good thinking. Last but not least, we can prioritize quality over speed and take the time to thoroughly test and improve our products. Yes, quality should always be our top priority. By doing so, we can ensure that our users have the best experience possible. Agreed. Let's get started on implementing these strategies and making our software the best it can be. Sounds like a plan. I'm excited to see the positive impact these changes will have on our products. Hi there. I'm A, a local fisherman. Nice to meet you, B. Hello, A. I'm B, an engineer from a marine energy company. Pleasure to meet you too. So, what brings you here to our humble fishing port? Well, my company is planning to develop some marine energy devices in this area, and we want to make sure that our project won't negatively affect your livelihood. That's good to hear. We've been relying on fishing for generations, and we don't want any harm done to it. Absolutely. We believe that fishing and marine energy can coexist. But I was wondering, do you have any concerns or suggestions for us? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the fish migration patterns. We need to make sure that the energy devices won't block their routes. Yes, that's definitely something we've considered. Our team is working on developing devices that don't interfere with the natural flow of things. Another thing is the noise pollution. Some fish species are very sensitive to it, and it could disrupt their behavior. I see. We'll make sure to keep the noise levels low and monitor the impact on the fish population. One more thing. 
Our boats need enough space to maneuver, and we don't want to get tangled up in the energy devices or have our nets damaged. Noted. We'll take into account the space requirements and make sure that our devices won't pose a risk to your boats and nets. Great to hear that. You seem to have a thorough plan in place. I appreciate your consideration for our community and environment. Thank you, A. We want to be responsible and respectful partners in this endeavor. Anytime you have concerns or feedback, please don't hesitate to let us know. Will do. And anytime you need a fresh catch from the sea, don't hesitate to come to me. Laughing, I'll take you up on that offer. Thanks for your time, A. No problem, B. Good luck with your project. Hey there. Can I ask your opinion on something? Sure thing. What's up? Well, I'm thinking of buying a new phone, but I'm not sure how many I should get. How many are you thinking of buying? I was thinking maybe two. One for myself and one as a gift for my sister. Ah, uh, I see. Well, what's your budget like? It's pretty flexible, but I don't want to spend more than I have to. Got it. Have you done any research on the phones you're interested in? Yeah, I've been looking at a few different options. I just can't decide which one to go with. Well, what are some of the pros and cons you've found so far? The one I like the most has great camera quality, but it's also the most expensive. Hmm, that's definitely something to consider. Have you thought about going with a slightly cheaper model and getting two instead? That's not a bad idea. Maybe I should look into that more. It's worth considering. Plus, your sister might not care as much about the camera quality as you do. True, true. But what if she ends up liking my phone better? Then you can just tell her you got the better one because you're the favorite sibling. Haha, <laughs> I like the way you think. Alright, looks like I'm getting two phones. Glad I could help. Hey B, I've been thinking about how we can use machine learning to make our smart homes even smarter. Any ideas? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is using machine learning algorithms to predict a user's preferences and make recommendations accordingly. That's a great idea. We could use data from sensors and user behavior to train the machine learning model. Yeah, and we could also use natural language processing to enable voice control and make it more convenient for users to interact with the smart devices in their homes. Absolutely. That would make it easier for people to manage their schedules and even control the temperature of their rooms just by using their voice. And we could also use machine learning to identify patterns in energy usage and optimize our systems for maximum efficiency. Yes. We could reduce energy consumption and help our planet at the same time. Another interesting way we can use machine learning is to identify anomalies in sensor data and alert the user in case of any unusual activity in their home. Oh, I like that. It would give people peace of mind and ensure their homes are safe and secure. And we could also use machine learning to learn the user's behavior and automatically adjust certain settings, like lighting or temperature, based on their preferences. Wow, talk about taking our smart homes to the next level. I'm excited to get started on this project. Same here. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, but I know we can make it happen with our combined expertise. Hey, B. What's up? Not much, just brainstorming some ideas for our upcoming project. Same here. I was thinking we could use natural language processing to analyze news articles. That's a great idea. We could use sentiment analysis to see how people are reacting to certain news events. Exactly. We could also use topic modeling to identify the most prevalent topics in the news cycle. And we could use named entity recognition to identify key players and organizations involved in the news stories. Yes, that could give us a better understanding of how different events are connected. Absolutely. But we should also be cautious of potential biases in our data sets. That's a good point. We could use methods like random sampling to ensure our data is representative. And we should also consider the limitations of the technology. Natural language processing isn't perfect, and it may not always accurately reflect the nuances of human language. Right. But even with those limitations, I think there's a lot of potential for this kind of analysis to inform our reporting and help us understand the world in new ways. For sure. And who knows, maybe we'll even unearth some unexpected insights along the way. That's definitely the hope. So, where should we start with this project? Well, we'll need to gather articles for our data set. I can handle that if you want to start working on the code. Sounds good to me. Let's make this happen. Hello, I'm A, the data scientist. Nice to meet you, B. Hi there, I'm B, the software engineer. It's good to meet you too, A. So, we're here to discuss designing a risk control system for the bank. Right. 
We need to make sure the system is robust enough to handle any financial risks that may arise. Absolutely. My job is to assess the data and provide insights on potential risks, while your job is to create a system that can react to those risks in real time. Yes, that's correct. But you know what they say, garbage in, garbage out. So, we'll need to work together to ensure the data we're using is accurate and reliable. Absolutely. We don't want to create a system that shuts down the bank due to a false alarm. And we don't want to miss a potential risk that could lead to financial turmoil. So, how can we balance accuracy and efficiency in this system? We could use machine learning algorithms to continuously improve the system's predictions and get rid of any false positives. That's a good idea. We could also set up alerts to notify the appropriate personnel in case of emergency. Yes, and we could set up a risk scoring system to prioritize the potential risks. Excellent. This is going to be a great collaboration. Indeed. With your engineering skills and my data science skills, we'll be unstoppable in creating a top-notch risk control system. I couldn't agree more. Let's get started. Let's do it. Good morning, Mr. Government Official. Thank you for meeting me at the port today. No problem. It's always good to hear from our hardworking fishermen and fisherwomen. What can I do for you? Well, as a fishery statistician, I've noticed some inaccuracies in our data collection methods. I think we could improve our efforts to manage and protect our fish stocks if we updated the system. I see. That's definitely something we should be looking into. What do you suggest? One idea I had is to use electronic tracking tags to monitor fish populations in real time. It would provide more accurate data and save money on man hours spent collecting information manually. That's an interesting proposal. But do you think the cost of implementing this technology is worth it? Absolutely. It's an investment in the future of our fishing industry. Plus, the data we get will help us make data-driven decisions and sustainably manage our fish stocks. Okay, well let's look into it further. Are there any other improvements you suggest we make? Yes, I also think we should beef up our education and outreach efforts to encourage responsible fishing practices. It's important that our fishermen and fisherwomen understand the long-term consequences of their actions on the environment. Great point. We'll definitely look into that as well. Thank you for bringing these issues to my attention. Of course, it's my pleasure. I'm passionate about improving the well-being of our oceans and the livelihoods of our fishermen and fisherwomen. Your passion is truly admirable, and I appreciate your insights. Let's work together to make a difference for our community and our environment. Agreed. Thank you for your time, Mr. Government Official. Have a great day. You too. Let's stay in touch about these ideas. Hey, how's your family been doing these days? They're doing well, thanks for asking. How about yours? Oh, they're good too. I actually saw your sister's post about her new job, congratulations to her. Thank you. Yeah, she's been working really hard to get to where she is now. That's great to hear. And what about your parents? They're doing okay. They're planning a trip to visit some family members soon. Oh, that sounds like fun. Do they have any other trips planned for the future? Not at the moment, but they're always talking about wanting to travel more. I can relate to that. I love exploring new places. Speaking of which, have you gone on any vacations lately? Yeah, actually my partner and I went on a road trip up the coast last month. It was so much fun. That sounds amazing. I've always wanted to do that. Speaking of your partner, how are they doing? They're great, thanks for asking. They just got a promotion at their job, so they've been busy with that. Congrats to them too. You guys are both killing it with your careers. Ha ha, thanks. It's been a lot of hard work, but worth it in the end. Definitely. Hey, I know this might sound random, but have you tried any new recipes lately? Yes, actually. I found a really good one for a spicy Thai soup that I can't stop making. Yum, that sounds delicious. I'll have to get the recipe from you sometime. Absolutely. I can send it to you later. Thanks so much. And hey, don't forget to tell your family that I said hi. Will do. Thanks for asking about them. Hey, have you heard about the new project that we're launching soon? No, what's it about? It's an online campaign to promote our latest product. I was thinking we could create a website and social media pages to engage with our audience. Sounds interesting. Do we have a timeline for this? Yes, we're planning to go live in two months. That gives us enough time to create a strategy and execute it. Two months? That's not a lot of time. It's all right, 
we can do it. We'll need to work together and delegate tasks accordingly. Okay, that makes sense. Who's going to be in charge of creating the website? I was thinking you could take the lead on that. You have experience with web design, right? Yes, I do. I'll get started on it right away. Great. And I'll handle our social media pages. I think we should focus on Instagram and Twitter for this campaign. Should we consider Facebook too? Definitely. Facebook is still a major platform with a large audience. We can't ignore it. All right, I'll make sure to include Facebook in the website design. Perfect. And we should also plan on creating some interesting content to share on our pages. Any ideas on what that could be? Maybe we could create some how-to videos showing how our product can be used. Or we could share customer testimonials. That's a great idea. And we should also consider running some contests to engage our audience. Yes, I was just about to suggest that. Maybe we could have a photo contest where customers share their favorite way to use our product. That's a fun idea. I think our audience would really enjoy that. All right, we have a plan. Let's get to work. Good morning. We have some new tea flavors for you to try today. Good morning. That sounds great. I just made a fresh batch of my famous coconut-filled sticky rice cakes. Yum, I love those. How about I pair them with our floral jasmine tea? Sounds perfect. And have you tried our new oolong tea? It has a subtle fruity flavor. I haven't, but I'd love to. Maybe we could pair it with your pandan leaf sticky rice cakes? Absolutely. I also have some durian-filled ones if you're feeling adventurous. Durian? Hmm, I've heard it can be an acquired taste, but I trust your cooking. Why not? Great. And for the tea, I also have a smoky black tea that pairs well with my spicy green bean and chili paste sticky rice cakes. That sounds like a bold and delicious combo. I'm in. Fantastic. Let's get these treats prepared for our hungry customers. Agreed. And maybe we should plan a tea and sticky rice cake taste testing event here in the old town. Brilliant idea. We can invite locals and tourists to try our authentic Thai flavors. Yes, let's do that. Our partnership is so successful, we should expand our offerings and introduce even more unique pairings. Yes, let's keep working together and creating tasty experiences for everyone to enjoy. Good afternoon, welcome to Miami Beach Hotel. How can I assist you today? Hi, good afternoon. I have a reservation for a room under the name of Smith. Great. Could I have your ID and credit card, please? Sure, here they are. Thank you. Just to confirm, you will be staying with us for three nights, is that correct? Yes, that's right. Perfect. We have a few options available for you, including a room with a view of the ocean. Would you be interested in that? Oh, that sounds amazing. How much extra does it cost? It's an extra $50 a night. Is that okay with you? I think I'll go for it. Can you give me some more information about the room? Of course. The room is on our top floor, with a balcony overlooking the beach. It also has a king-sized bed, a mini fridge, and a flat-screen TV. That sounds perfect. I'll take it. Excellent. I just need you to fill out some paperwork, and then you'll be all set. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Your room key is ready and waiting for you at the concierge desk on the way to the elevator. Thanks so much for all your help. You're very welcome. Enjoy your stay at Miami Beach Hotel. Hey B, have you seen the ISO 27001 Vulnerability Assessment Report? Oh yeah, I saw it yesterday. What did you think about it? Honestly, I found it more scary than watching a horror movie. Haha, uh, I know what you mean. It's like a list of all the things that could go wrong. Exactly. It makes me want to put on a tin foil hat and hide under my desk. Don't worry, hey. We'll fix all those vulnerabilities and make our system as safe as Fort Knox. Ah, you're right. We'll show those hackers what they're up against. That's the spirit. And who knows, we might even get some fancy award for our security measures. Ooh, that would be nice. We could hang it up next to our Employee of the Month certificate. Ha ha, yes. Then we can really impress our clients and show them they can trust us with their data. Plus, we can sleep better at night knowing we've done everything we can to protect our company. Absolutely. And maybe we can even go out and celebrate our success once we're done with this report. I like the way you think, B. Nothing like a good night out to forget about all those vulnerabilities. But first, let's get to work and fix them. 
We'll show that ISO report who's boss. Couldn't agree more, B. Let's do this. Have you ever had fajitas before? Of course. Who doesn't love fajitas? I know, right? It's like a fiesta in your mouth. Ha uh, ha, yeah. I love the sizzle of the meat and veggies when it comes out to the table. And the tortillas are always warm and soft. I could just eat them by themselves. Don't forget the guacamole and sour cream. They're the perfect topping. Oh man, now I'm craving fajitas. Where's the nearest Mexican restaurant? Let's go now. I'm starving. Do you prefer chicken or beef fajitas? I'm a chicken person myself. What about you? Same here. Chicken all the way. Have you ever tried shrimp fajitas? No, I haven't. Are they good? Oh yeah, they're delicious. They're a little bit more expensive, but worth the extra cost. I'll have to give them a try next time. But for now, let's go get our chicken fajita fix. Agreed. They better have enough guacamole, or I might just cry. Hi there. My name is A. Thanks for taking me to Wuhan today. Hi A. I'm happy to have you as my passenger. So, where are you from? I'm from the United States. How about you? I was born and raised here in Wuhan. It's a great city to live in. I've heard lots of good things about it. What do you recommend I see first? Well, the Yellow Crane Tower is a must-see. It's a famous landmark and has a lot of history. Sounds interesting. What else can I do in Wuhan? You can also take a walk at the South Lake, visit the Hubei Provincial Museum, and taste the famous hot dry noodles. Wow, I can't wait to try those noodles. Have you tried American food before? Yes, I have. I like hamburgers and pizza, but I prefer Chinese food. I understand. I love Chinese food too, especially the spicy ones. That's great to hear. By the way, have you ever tried speaking Chinese? Yes, I have learned some basic Chinese phrases. And I how, xia xia, and bu yong xia are some that I know. That's impressive. You'll do great here in Wuhan. We're almost there. Is there anything else you need to know? No, I think I'm good. Thank you for the conversation and the information. I'm looking forward to having a great time in Wuhan. You're welcome. A, hey, enjoy your stay and don't hesitate to contact me if you need anything. Hey, have you heard of ISO 27001 Business Impact? Yeah, I have. But I'm not exactly sure what it is. Well, it's a standard that helps organizations manage their information security risks. That sounds important. Can you give me an example? Sure. Let's say a company stores customer data in a database. If that database was hacked, it could have a huge impact on the business. That makes sense. So, how does ISO 27001 help prevent that from happening? It sets up a framework for companies to identify potential risks, assess their impact, and implement controls to mitigate them. Ah, got it. So, what happens if a company doesn't comply with ISO 27001? They risk losing business, reputation damage, and financial penalties. Yikes, sounds like compliance is crucial then. Definitely. But it's not just about compliance, it's about protecting your business as well. Absolutely. So, how do you become certified in ISO 27001? You need to implement the standard, pass an audit, and get certified by an accredited body. Sounds like a lot of work. It is, but it's worth it in the long run. Plus, you get the added benefit of demonstrating to your customers that you take information security seriously. True, I'd feel more comfortable doing business with a company that's certified in ISO 27001. Exactly. And the best part is, once you're certified, you need to maintain it through ongoing monitoring and improvements, so you're constantly improving your security posture. That's great to hear. I'm definitely going to look into implementing ISO 27001 at my company. Awesome, let me know if you have any questions along the way. Hey there, B. How's it going? Hey, A. I'm doing great, thanks for asking. What's up? I was just thinking about our website's SEO. I think we need to improve our ranking on search engines. Definitely. What do you have in mind? Well, for starters, we need to optimize our website's content with targeted keywords. That's a good idea. We should also look into backlinking and social media engagement to boost our online presence. Absolutely. And we also need to make sure our website is mobile-friendly and has a fast loading speed. Agreed. And don't forget about user experience. 
We need to make sure our website is easy to navigate and aesthetically pleasing. Right. And what about incorporating video and visual elements to enhance our website's appeal? I love that idea. Visual content is always a crowd pleaser. Another thing we should consider is analyzing our competition strategies and incorporating similar tactics into our own. Good point. And we should also ensure that we're using proper headers and meta descriptions for our website's pages. Yes, those seem like small details, but they make a big difference. And we need to constantly monitor and update our website's SEO to stay on top. Absolutely. It's an ongoing process, but it's definitely worth it. Thanks for bringing this up, A. No problem, B. Let's work together to boost our website's ranking on search engines. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm doing great, thank you for asking. So, let's talk about language learning strategies. What methods have you found most helpful? I find that practicing speaking with native speakers and listening to podcasts in the target language has been very effective for me. That's great to hear. Have you tried using flashcards or other memory aids? Yes, I use flashcards to learn new vocabulary and conjugate verbs. Excellent. Another strategy you might try is immersing yourself in the culture of the language you are learning. It can help you learn the language more intuitively. That's a great idea. I'll try to watch some movies in the target language or read books written in it. Perfect. Also, don't forget about grammar exercises. They might seem tedious, but they are crucial in enforcing the language rules. Yes, I've been doing grammar exercises regularly. It really helps me understand the structure of the language. Good to hear it. Finally, I recommend using online language resources to practice your skills. I use online resources regularly, especially language learning apps that gamify the process of language learning. Great job using multiple strategies to learn the language. B. Keep up the good work. Thank you, A. I will continue to work on improving my language skills. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Just a bit tired from staying up late studying last night. I understand how you feel. So, how is the course progressing for you? It's going well so far. The lectures are interesting and the exercises are challenging but doable. That's great to hear. Is there any topic or lesson that you find particularly interesting? Yes, I found the lesson on cultural differences in business communication very enlightening. I never realized how much cultural context affects the way we communicate. That's a fascinating topic indeed. Speaking of culture, have you tried any new food places around campus lately? Yes, I went to this new sushi place last week and it was amazing. I've been craving it ever since. Ah, uh, sushi is always a good choice. Have you tried any dishes that you were hesitant to try at first but ended up liking? Actually, yes, I was hesitant to try oysters, but my friend convinced me and I ended up liking them a lot. That's great to hear. Stepping out of your comfort zone can lead to some amazing discoveries. Speaking of which, it's time for us to move on to today's lesson. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Great. Today, we will be delving into the topic of negotiations. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on this one. Me too. Negotiations always sound like an interesting but difficult topic to tackle. Well, I'm here to guide you every step of the way. All right, let's get started. Hi there. I'm here to check in for my stay. Hello and welcome. May I have your name and reservation details? Sure thing. My name is John Smith, and I booked a room for three nights. Great, let me pull up your reservation. Can I offer you any upgrades during your stay? Hmm, what do you have in mind? Well, we have a deluxe room with a balcony that overlooks the ocean. It's quite lovely. That sounds amazing. How much is the upgrade? It's an additional $50 per night. Would you like to go ahead and upgrade? Yes, please. I can't pass up a view like that. Wonderful. And just so you know, we offer complimentary breakfast every morning in our restaurant. That's great to hear. I'm really looking forward to my stay here. We're happy to have you, John. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Not at the moment, but thank you for your help. It's my pleasure. If you need anything during your stay, don't hesitate to give our front desk a call. Enjoy your stay. Hi B, have you thought about how we can design a system that can handle large amounts of user data for our insurance company? Hey A, yeah, it's been on my mind. I was thinking we could use a distributed database system to manage the data effectively. Distributed database system? Can you explain what that means for me, B? 
Sure thing, A. A distributed database system allow us to store and process data across multiple servers, which means we can handle more data and it can also improve system efficiency. Ah, uh, that makes sense. How would we go about implementing that kind of system? Well, we would need to use a database management system, like MySQL or Oracle, to manage the distributed database, and we would also need to configure the servers to work together in the system. That sounds like a lot of work. Are there any other options we could consider? We could also look into cloud hosting solutions, like AWS or Azure, which could provide us with the infrastructure and tools we need to manage the system on the cloud. Interesting. Would that be a more cost-effective option for us? It could be, depending on our needs and usage. It's worth exploring and comparing the costs and benefits of both options. Definitely. What about security concerns? How can we ensure that the user data is safe and protected? We would need to implement strong security measures, like encryption and access control mechanisms, and regularly update and patch the system to protect against any security vulnerabilities. Got it. It's important to prioritize user data protection. Thanks for bringing that up, B. No problem, A. We also need to consider scalability and flexibility in the system design to ensure that it can handle growth and adapt to changing business needs. Yes, we don't want to have to completely overhaul the system in a few years' time. That's a good point, B. Thanks, A. It's important to think long-term when designing a system like this. Any other ideas or questions you have? I think you've covered everything I had in mind, B. This has been a productive discussion. Let's continue researching and planning the project together. Agreed, A. Looking forward to working together on this project. Hi there. I'm an app developer. Nice to meet you. Hi. It's great to meet you too. I'm a game designer. I'm assuming we're here to discuss a new project. Absolutely. We're working on a gamified learning app. Do you have any ideas for the game elements? Of course I do. I've been playing a lot of puzzle games lately, and I think it'll fit perfectly. Maybe we can match the correct answers to move to the next level or something like that. Interesting. I'm thinking of a reward system for each correct answer. Maybe we can give the users points and badges to keep them engaged. I like that. Maybe we can even have a leaderboard to make it more competitive. Users will be motivated to learn more so that they can climb up the ranks. Perfect. That would definitely keep users engaged. But let's make sure the questions are challenging enough so the game doesn't get too easy. Good point. We don't want to make it too hard either. Maybe we can add some fun animations and sound effects to keep users entertained. Definitely. We want to make sure learning feels like a fun experience. What about for younger audiences? How can we make sure it's not too difficult for them? We can try using colorful visuals and maybe add some small interactive elements. It'll make it seem more like a game than a traditional learning experience. Great idea. Now, let's think about the subjects we can cover. What do you think? We can have a range of topics, like history, science, and languages. Maybe even have multiple languages for users to learn from. I like it. We can add some culture facts as well. All right, we have a clear direction now. Let's get to our work and create a fantastic learning experience for everyone. Can't wait to get started on this educational journey. Hello there, are you a chef for the airline? Yes, I am. I work in the kitchen at the airline's headquarters. Wow, that must be amazing. What dishes are most popular among passengers? Well, we have a range of options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our most popular meals include chicken or beef with vegetables, pasta dishes, and vegetarian options. That sounds delicious. How do you come up with the menu? We work with a team of nutritionists and take into account dietary needs and cultural preferences. We also take inspiration from different culinary traditions from around the world. I see. What is the most challenging part of your job? The most challenging part is probably creating meals that can withstand the high altitude and limited cabin space. We need to make sure the food is tasty and fresh, but also practical for air travel. That definitely sounds like a challenge. Is there any dish that you are particularly proud of? Yes, our signature dessert is a chocolate lava cake. It's a crowd favorite and it's always satisfying to see passengers enjoying it. Yum, I love chocolate lava cake. Do you have any tips for making it at home? Sure. The key is to use high-quality chocolate and to make sure the center is still slightly gooey when you bake it. And don't forget a scoop of vanilla ice cream on top. Thank you for the tip. It's been great to chat with you. Likewise, have a good day and safe travels. Hi there, B. How's everything going with the experiment? 
Hey, hey. It's going well so far. The results are promising. That's great to hear. Did you encounter any problems during the process? Not really. Just some minor hiccups that were easy to fix. Nice. By the way, have you noticed that the lab's coffee machine is broken? Yes, I did. It's a tragic loss for all caffeine-dependent individuals. Don't worry, I brought my own coffee. Want some? Yes, please. I'd appreciate it. Sips Coffee MMM, this is delicious. Thanks. I call it the lab fuel. It's the secret to my productivity. I believe it. Laugh speaking of productivity, we should probably get back to work. Agreed. Let's review the data we've collected so far. Sure. But first, have you seen that new video of cats falling off tables that's been circulating around? Laughs no, I haven't. I've been too busy with the experiment. Well, let me tell you, it's hilarious. All right, all right. Let's finish our work and then we can watch the cat video during our break. Sounds like a plan. Let's get to it. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm the information security analyst assigned to this project. What's your role? Hi there, great to meet you too. I'm the network engineer, tasked with maintaining the company's network infrastructure. Good to know. So, where do we stand currently with our network security? Well, we recently experienced a data breach and that's why management is interested in a proposal to beef up our security measures. All right. The first thing to do is to analyze our network vulnerabilities. What tools do we have in place for this? We use a combination of network scanners and intrusion detection systems, but they only give us a snapshot of potential vulnerabilities. Makes sense. We need to conduct a thorough security audit to identify gaps in our network security. Yes, that should be part of our proposal. What else do you recommend we tackle in terms of improving network security? One area we could focus on is educating employees on proper security practices, like not sharing passwords, how to identify phishing emails, and so on. That's a great idea. Social engineering attacks are becoming increasingly sophisticated and employees need to be able to recognize them. Exactly. And we should also implement multi-factor authentication and encryption for sensitive data. Sounds like we have our work cut out for us. What's the timeline for this project? Ideally, we should aim to complete the security audit within the next month, followed by a proposal to management within the following month. Agreed. We'll need to collaborate closely on this project. Do you prefer to communicate via email, phone, or in-person meetings? Let's schedule regular meetings to discuss progress and challenges. I find that face-to-face -face meetings are more effective, but we can also use other mediums for quick updates. Sounds good to me. Anything else you'd like to chat about before we wrap up this meeting? Just a friendly reminder to make sure we track and document all the work we do on this project. We want to be transparent and accountable to management. Of course, thanks for the reminder. I'm excited to start working with you and make our company's network security airtight. Same here, let's do this. Hello, B. How are you doing today? Hi, A. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. What about you? Not too bad, thanks. I was wondering if we could have a chat about implementing an automated testing and deployment process for our software development company. That sounds like a good idea. What kind of tools are we thinking about using for that? Well, we could use Jenkins for our continuous integration and maybe Selenium for our automated testing. What do you think? Those are both great options. I also think we should consider using Docker for our containerization. That's a good point. With Docker, we could easily deploy our applications to different environments without worrying about compatibility issues. Exactly. Plus, it would simplify the process of scaling our applications up or down depending on demand. Agreed. Do you have any suggestions for how we could make our automated testing and deployment process more efficient? I think we should aim for a robust test suite that covers as many scenarios as possible. That way, we can catch any issues early on and avoid any potential downtime in production. That's a great approach. And with Jenkins and Docker, we could make sure our tests run automatically and quickly. Yes, and we could also automate the deployment process as well, so we don't have to worry about manual errors or delays. Absolutely. With these tools and strategies in place, we could ensure a smoother and more reliable software development workflow. Agreed. It's exciting to think about the possibilities of what we could achieve with an automated testing and deployment process. Definitely. Thanks for the chat, B. Let's get to work and make this happen. Good morning, Dr. B. 
I'm delighted to meet you here at our rural medical center. Good morning, hey. It's great to be here. I've heard so much about the incredible work you do in preventing infectious diseases in this community. Yes, it's always a challenge, but we're passionate about keeping our people well. What's your assessment of our efforts so far? Your team is doing an excellent job, hey. However, with different environments and various types of diseases, constant education and innovative solutions are necessary. Certainly. With the pandemic affecting everywhere, we've tightened our efforts to address the COVID-19 safety protocols. What are some tips we can integrate into our current practices? There are many things we can do. Educate the locals on how coughing and sneezing in their elbows can stop the spread of fluids. Promote regular hand washing and installing hand sanitizer dispensers in highly trafficked areas. What about the use of face masks? It seems a bit of a challenge getting people to comply with that. It's important to educate them on the dangers of not using face masks, demonstrating how the virus can spread swiftly. Encourage them to wear masks when in public, especially in confined spaces. Got it. How about our migrant workforce? It's difficult for them to follow our health protocols when they move from place to place. That's quite a challenge, but we can work on measures like ensuring health workers follow up on their state of health. Restricting mainland entry when necessary would also be wise. That sounds like great advice, Dr. B. I'll look into implementing those ideas immediately. Thanks for coming over and sharing those incredible insights with us. You're welcome, hey. It's always a pleasure coming over to the Rural Medical Center. Keep up the excellent work. Good morning. I'm excited to be working with you on creating Swiss chocolate desserts. Good morning to you too. It's lovely to have someone to share the process with. What's the secret to making a perfect chocolate cake? Well, quality ingredients are key. We use only the finest Swiss chocolate and fresh cream. That sounds delicious. What else do we need? We'll also need sugar, butter, and eggs to create a rich and decadent cake. I can already taste it. What about our chocolate treats? For those, we can use a variety of chocolate types, like dark, milk, and white chocolate. We can add nuts, fruits, or even liquor to make them flavorful. Yum, I'm getting hungry, just thinking about it. Yes, our desserts are sure to satisfy any sweet tooth. How about we start with the chocolate cake? Sounds like a plan. I'll get the ingredients, and we can begin. All right, let's get to work and create something truly special. I'm eager to learn from the experts and can't wait to try it out. You'll be a pro in no time. Making desserts is all about passion and creativity. I couldn't agree more. I can't wait to see our final products and taste the fruits of our labor. Me too. It's a joy to create something that others can enjoy and appreciate. Hi there, I'm A, a software engineer. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm B, a mathematician. Pleasure to meet you too. I heard you're an expert in statistics. Can you tell me how it can be applied in the insurance industry? Sure. Statistical models can be used to predict and analyze the risks associated with different types of insurance policies. So, can you give me an example? Let's say we're looking at life insurance. We can use statistical analysis to determine the likelihood of someone passing away within a certain time frame. That sounds interesting. How would that help insurance companies? It allows them to adjust their premiums based on the risk of insuring a particular individual or group of people. Ah, uh, I see. What other areas of insurance can statistics be applied to? Well, it can be used to analyze the risks associated with car accidents or home damage, for example. Interesting. Is there a specific statistical model you prefer to use for insurance risk analysis? It depends on the specific situation, but I've found that probability models like Bayesian analysis can be quite effective. That's good to know. Are there any limitations to using statistical models in insurance? Yes, there can be a lot of uncertainty or unpredictability involved, especially when it comes to rare events or outliers. Right, I can see how that could be a challenge. Have you ever encountered any unexpected results when using statistical models for insurance? Yes, I've seen cases where the data doesn't fit the model or where outliers skew the results. That's why it's important to constantly evaluate and adjust the models as needed. Makes sense. So, what do you think the future of insurance risk analysis looks like? As the amount of data available increases, I think we'll see more sophisticated and accurate models being developed. It's an exciting time for the field. Definitely. Thanks for sharing your expertise with me, B. Anytime, A. It was great chatting with you. Hey there, it's great to meet you. I'm excited to work with you on this project. Hi. Nice meeting you too. I'm eager to make sure our application is absolutely secure. Absolutely. 
So, let's talk about the testing strategies we're going to use to keep our application secure. Well, let's start with input validation. We need to make sure we're not accepting any malicious input from the user. That's definitely true. But what about SQL injection attacks? Are we protected against those? Yes, we should have parameterized queries in place to protect against those kinds of attacks. But we also need to be aware of cross-site scripting. Of course. We want to protect our users from any harmful scripts that might be injected into the website. One thing we can do is use a content security policy to make sure that only trusted scripts can be executed on the page. That sounds like a good idea. What about HTTPS? Should we be using it? Definitely. HTTPS encrypts communications between the client and the server. This way, sensitive information is not exposed. Okay, sounds great. But what about DDoS attacks? How can we handle those? Well, we can use load balancers and firewalls to protect against those kinds of attacks. But we should also make sure that our server is set up to handle high levels of traffic. Right, that makes sense. And we should also make sure that our login system is secure. Yes, using two-factor authentication is a good way to make sure that user accounts are not compromised. What about password security? Should we have strict password requirements? Yes, strong password requirements are always a good idea. We should enforce password complexity and make sure that users are not reusing old passwords. Great. Anything else we should be aware of? Well, we should also make sure that we're keeping up with security patches and updates. And regular security audits are a good way to make sure that our system is always secure. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks for all the great ideas. I'm looking forward to working on this project with you. No problem. Happy to help. Let's make sure our application is as secure as possible. Good morning, how can I help you today? Hi there, I have some questions about a legal matter I am dealing with. Okay, go ahead and tell me more about it. Well, I recently started a small business and I'm not sure if I need to register it with the government. Yes, you'll need to register your business with the appropriate government agency. We can help you with that. Great, thanks. Also, I'm leasing a space for my business and I want to make sure the lease agreement is fair and legal. Absolutely, we can review the lease agreement and make any necessary adjustments to protect your interests. That's a relief. Is there anything else I need to be aware of as a small business owner? Well, it's always a good idea to have a solid contract with your clients or customers. We can help you create customized contracts that meet your specific needs. Thank you, that's very helpful advice. Anything else I should know about? As your business grows, you'll want to make sure to comply with all applicable laws and regulations. We can assist you with that as well. I appreciate your expertise. This is all new to me, and it's reassuring to have someone knowledgeable on my side. No problem. That's what we're here for. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any more questions or concerns. Thank you again. I feel much more confident moving forward with my business knowing that I have your support. Good morning, B. How's the garden looking today? Good morning, A. It's looking lovely as usual. We did some pruning yesterday, and it really helped accentuate the colors. That's great to hear. I was actually thinking of adding some new flowers to the mix. What do you think? I think that would be a great idea. What kind of flowers were you thinking of adding? Maybe some daisies or sunflowers to add a pop of brightness to the garden. What do you think? I think the addition of those flowers would really complement the current array of plants in the garden. Perfect. I'll make sure to place an order for some seeds. By the way, do you think we should add a bird feeder to the garden to attract some wildlife? Yes, I think that's a great idea. Maybe we could hang it from that big oak tree over there. That's a great location, and will give us a good view of any birds that come by. Speaking of the oak tree, when was the last time we gave it a good trimming? It's been a few months, we could definitely benefit from some pruning. The branches are starting to look a bit overgrown. Alright, I'll make sure to add that to our maintenance schedule for next week. Do you think we need to add any new decorations to the garden? Well, I was actually thinking that maybe we could add a small water fountain to give the garden some ambience. Excellent idea, B. I love the sound of running water in a garden, and I think it will help make this garden feel even more peaceful. Agreed, I think it will be a great addition. All right then, shall we get to work? Absolutely. Thanks for your input, B. It's always a pleasure working with you in the garden. Good morning, Chef B. I'm excited to be working with you today on cooking up some delicious seafood dishes. Good morning, A. It's great to have you here. I've heard great things about your fresh catches. What have you brought in today? 
we've got some fantastic lobsters and crabs, as well as some succulent oysters and prawns that I just caught this morning. Wow, those sound amazing. Let's start with the oysters, shall we? How do you usually prepare them? I usually keep it simple, just shucking them and serving them on ice with some lemon wedges and a mignonette sauce. That sounds perfect, let's do that. And for the lobsters and crabs, how do you suggest we cook them? I like to steam the lobsters and roast the crabs with some herbs and spices for a bit of extra flavor. Wonderful, I can already smell the aroma. Let's get started and create some mouth-watering dishes for our customers. Absolutely, I'm ready to get cracking. It's always great being able to work with someone who shares the same passion for seafood as I do. Same here, eh? it's been great collaborating with you. I'm sure our customers are going to love the dishes we create today. Good morning, driver. I'm excited to see London today. Good morning. London is a great city, lots to see and do. What brings you to London? I have some business meetings, but I also want to explore the city, see the sights, try the food, all that. Sounds like a plan. What's on your itinerary for today? I'm planning to visit the Tower of London, and then maybe grab lunch at a pub. What do you recommend? The Tower of London is a great choice, and for lunch, you can't go wrong with fish and chips at a traditional pub. I've heard the traffic in London can be quite intense. How do you cope? The traffic can be a bit of a challenge, but I've been driving in London for years, so I know all the shortcuts and best routes. That's good to know. Have you seen any interesting things while driving around London lately? Actually, I drove past Buckingham Palace the other day and saw Queen Elizabeth's Royal Guards marching in their signature red uniforms. Always a sight to see. Wow, what luck. I hope I get to see something like that too. You never know what you might see in this city, always something interesting happening. Speaking of interesting, what do you think about the London Eye? The London Eye is a must-see attraction. It offers a breathtaking view of the city, especially at night when all the lights are on. Sounds amazing. I might visit it later in the evening. That's a great idea. The view at night is truly unforgettable. Thank you so much for the tips and conversation, driver. We've arrived at my first destination now. It was my pleasure. Have a great time exploring London, and don't hesitate to call me again if you need a ride. Hi there. Welcome to our booth. Can I help you with anything today? Hi, thanks for asking. I'm just looking around. Sure thing. But if you have any questions about our products, feel free to ask me. Actually, one of your products caught my eye. Can you tell me more about it? Of course, which one is it? The one with the bright colors and unique design. Ah, uh, you mean our new line of Bluetooth speakers. They come in vibrant colors and have an innovative shape that provides great sound quality. That sounds awesome. How does it connect to my device? It's really easy. Just activate the Bluetooth on your device and pair it with the speaker. It takes just a few seconds. Wow, that's so convenient. How much is it? It's currently on sale for $50, down from its original price of $60. Great. I think I'll take one. Wonderful. Do you have any questions about the other products? No, just this one for now. Thank you for your help. No problem at all. Thank you for choosing our product. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 Security Control? Yeah, I have heard of it. It's a standard for information security management, right? That's correct. It's a way to ensure that information and data are protected from unauthorized access or damage. Ah, uh, I see. That's interesting. I bet it's quite complex to implement, right? It can be, but it's worth the effort for the sake of security. I completely agree. Speaking of which, have you implemented any of the controls yet? Yeah, I have implemented access control network security, and encryption. Wow, you're ahead of me then. I've only implemented risk management and disaster recovery planning. Those are important too. Have you heard of the control category information security incident management? No, I haven't. What's that all about? It's about how to respond to a security incident, such as a data breach, hacking attempt, or virus outbreak. Oh, I get it. So it's basically like a plan of action. Yes, exactly. It's important to have it in place, because otherwise, the impact of a security incident can be much worse. That makes sense. It's reassuring to know that there are all these controls in place to protect our data. Absolutely. And it's also important for us to stay updated on new security threats and to regularly review and update our controls. True. Hey, 
Did you hear about the recent ransomware attack on that big corporation? Yeah, it's pretty scary stuff. Makes me glad we have these controls in place. Definitely. Hey, speaking of things in place, have you heard about this new firewall technology? No, I haven't. What's new about it? It's supposed to be able to detect and block malware in real time. That's impressive. We should definitely look into it. For sure. Thanks for the great chat, A. No problem, B. Always happy to discuss security control with a fellow professional. Hi there. I'm glad we're meeting here today. Yes, me too. So, what brings you here? I wanted to get your thoughts on a piece I'm working on. Of course. What's it about? It's a short story inspired by my time in Japan. Oh, that sounds interesting. What's the plot? It's about a lost tourist who ends up in a small rural town and has to find his way back to Tokyo with the help of a local shopkeeper. That's a really cool idea. Have you started writing it yet? Yes, I've got the first draft done. Great. Let me take a look at it. Sure thing. I'm hoping to submit it to a few literary magazines once it's polished. I think that's a great idea. Do you have anyone in mind? Yeah, I was thinking of submitting it to The New Yorker and The Atlantic. Those are both great options. Just remember to follow their submission guidelines carefully. Absolutely. I'll make sure to do my research first. One suggestion I have is to maybe expand a bit more on the cultural differences between the tourist and the shopkeeper. That's a great point. I'll definitely work on that in my revisions. I think this story has a lot of potential. Good luck with it. Thank you so much for your feedback. I really appreciate it. Hi there. You seem very deep in thought. What are you thinking about? Ah, uh, hello. I was just contemplating the connection between physics and the universe. Interesting. As an astronomer, I couldn't agree more. Physics is the foundation of everything we see in space. Absolutely. In fact, many astronomical phenomena, such as gravitational waves, can only be explained through the laws of physics. Yes. And studying the universe also allows physicists to test their theories and better understand the fundamental laws that govern our world. Exactly. When we study the cosmos, we are essentially studying the very fabric of our existence. It's fascinating to think of the endless possibilities that the universe holds. Who knows what other discoveries we'll make in the future? That's the beauty of science. And as our technology and understanding improve, we'll continue to unlock even more mysteries of the universe. Absolutely. I can't wait to see what the future holds for astronomy and physics. Same here. It's exciting to be a part of a field that is constantly evolving and revealing new secrets of the universe. Well, it was great chatting with you. Let's continue exploring and learning more about the amazing world around us. Agreed. Keep looking up, my astronomer friend. Hi there. I'm one of the food processing workers here. It's nice to meet you. Hello. I'm the owner of this candy store. I'm excited to work with you today. Same here. I'm familiar with the traditional candy-making techniques used in Chaozhou. What type of candy are we making today? We'll be making coconut rolls. It's a popular candy among the locals and tourists alike. Sounds delicious. What are the ingredients we'll be using? We'll be using grated coconut, sugar, and a little bit of milk. We'll also add some food coloring for extra appeal. Interesting. Can you show me how to make it? Sure. First, we mix the grated coconut with sugar and milk until it becomes a paste. Then, we roll it out and add the food coloring. Finally, we cut it into small pieces and wrap it with rice paper. That seems easy enough. I'm excited to try it out. Great. Let's get started then. Oh, and by the way, have you tried our other Chaozhou candies? Not yet, but I heard they're really good. They are. We have everything from peanut candy to fruit jelly. You should try them out. I definitely will. Which one is your personal favorite? That's a tough question. I love them all, but if I had to choose, I'd say the Osmanthus flower cake. That sounds intriguing. What's it made of? It's made of sticky rice flour, sugar, and Osmanthus flowers. It has a unique floral taste and aroma. Wow, I'll definitely give that a try too. Thanks for introducing me to all these delicious candies. No problem. It's my pleasure. Working together to make traditional Chaozhou candies is what makes this area special, after all. I couldn't agree more. Let's keep it up. Hi B, how's it going? Hey, doing good. 
just trying to figure out how we can optimize our network infrastructure to improve service availability. That's a great idea. Have you considered implementing load balancing for our servers? Yes, I was actually thinking about that. It would definitely help distribute traffic evenly among our servers. Another option would be to use content delivery networks, CDNs, to improve the delivery speed of our content to users. Absolutely, our users would definitely appreciate faster load times. Speaking of content delivery, have you looked into using edge computing to reduce latency? Yes, edge computing could be a game changer for us. It could significantly reduce the distance between our servers and users, ultimately reducing latency. Awesome. I'm also looking at ways to secure our network. I think implementing a firewall and using HTTPS protocol can help protect user data. That's a smart move. We certainly don't want any breaches or data leaks. Have you thought about using a VPN to secure our internal communications? Yes, I completely agree. A VPN could definitely help prevent unauthorized access to our network. Great minds think alike. It seems like we're making some good strides to optimize our network infrastructure. Yeah, and with these changes, we should be able to provide our users with a much better service experience. Definitely. I'm excited to see these improvements come to life. Do you want to grab some lunch and celebrate our progress? Sure, that sounds like a great idea. Maybe we can try that new pizza place down the street? Pizza sounds perfect to me. Good day, mate. Where can I drop you off today? Hi. Could you please take me to the Royal Botanic Gardens today? Sure thing. It's a beautiful destination. What do you have planned there? Just planning to walk around and enjoy the beautiful scenery. Do you have any favorite spots there? Definitely the Fern Gully. It's so peaceful and serene there. That sounds lovely. Do you often come here to drive passengers around? Yeah, I do this part-time. I love meeting new people and exploring different parts of the city. It's great to meet a friendly driver like you. Do you have any music suggestions for the ride? Actually, I have some classic rock playlists if you're interested. Awesome. Can I request some Queen songs? You got it. Bohemian Rhapsody always sets the perfect mood for a road trip. That's my favorite. You have great taste. Thanks, glad to hear that. Here we are, the Royal Botanic Gardens. Enjoy your walk, I'll be waiting for you. Thank you so much for the ride and the fun conversation. Have a great day. My pleasure. Hope to cross paths with you again. Take care. Good morning, B. How's the progress on your project? Hi, A. It's going well, thanks for asking. We just finished the first phase and now moving on to the second one. Excellent. I appreciate your hard work. Are there any challenges that you're facing at this point? Well, we did have some unexpected obstacles, but we have been able to overcome them by brainstorming and collaborating as a team. That's great to hear. I'm glad everyone is taking the initiative to support one another. How about the timeline? Are we on track to meet the deadline? Yes, we are. As per our project schedule, we are still within our timeline. Perfect. Keep up the good work. Let me know if there's anything that you need from me or anyone else. Thank you, A. I will. By the way, did I mention that I really like your tie? Laughs, thank you. I like your shirt too. That's a nice pattern. Laughs, thanks, A. Have you been following the latest sports news? My favorite team is on a winning streak. Yeah, I have been keeping up with it. Actually, my team beat yours last week. Laughs? Smiling, I know, I was disappointed about that. But it's all about how we rebound and come back stronger. Absolutely. It's the same mentality we have here at work. We may face setbacks, but it's how we bounce back that counts. Nods, exactly. I'm glad we have the same mindset. Hi there. I'm a software engineer in the company. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm a database administrator. Nice to meet you too. Great. So, how can we optimize our healthcare database structure? Well, we can start by eliminating redundant data entries. That would make the database smaller in size. Yes, that's a good point. Also, we can improve the indexing of the database for faster retrieval of records. Absolutely. And we can also add more security features to protect sensitive data. Yes, security is crucial in healthcare data management. By the way, have you watched the latest episode of Grey's Anatomy? No, I haven't had the chance to catch up on it yet. Is it good? Oh, it was intense. 
The hospital got hacked and all the patient records were compromised. That sounds like a nightmare. It just proves how important it is to have robust security measures in place. Exactly. It's exciting to work in the healthcare technology industry though. There are always new challenges and opportunities to improve people's lives. I couldn't agree more. It's fulfilling to know that our work contributes to the betterment of society. Absolutely. And with our combined expertise in software engineering and database management, we can make a significant impact. That's right. Let's work together to optimize the healthcare database and improve patient outcomes. Sounds like a plan. Let's grab a cup of coffee and dive into the details. Hey B, have you heard about the ISO 27001 contingency plan? Oh yeah. I've been reading about it lately. Why are you interested in it? Well, I have been thinking about implementing it in our department. What do you think? That's a great idea. But, do you know what it entails? Um, not really. Could you give me a quick overview? Sure, it's basically a systematic approach to handling unexpected events that may impact our information security. Ah, uh, I see. So, what kind of unexpected events are we talking about? It could be anything from natural disasters to cyber attacks or even a power outage. Got it. So, how do we prepare for such events? The first step is to conduct a risk assessment to identify potential risks and determine the likelihood and impact of those risks. Then, we need to develop and implement a contingency plan. Sounds like a lot of work. Do you think we have the resources to manage it? Of course. We just need to make sure that everyone is on board and we have a clear plan in place. I like the sound of that. But, do you think it will affect our daily operations? It shouldn't. With proper planning and communication, we can minimize the impact on our daily operations. That's good to hear. So, how do we test our contingency plan? We need to conduct regular drills and exercises to test the effectiveness of our plan and to identify any gaps or areas for improvement. That makes sense. And, what about updating the plan? We need to review and update the plan regularly to reflect changes in our organization or in the risk landscape. All right, seems like we've got a lot of work to do. But, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. It's always better to be prepared than to be caught off guard. Hey B, have you tried Currywurst before? No, I haven't. What is that? It's a popular German street food. It's a sausage that's slathered in curry ketchup and topped with curry powder. Oh wow, that sounds delicious. Where can I get it? Well, if you ever visit Germany, you'll find it sold in many street vendors. But there are also some places that sell it in other countries, like here in the U.S. That's good to know. Is it spicy? It depends on your preference. Some may find it a bit spicy because of the curry powder, but you can always ask for it to be less spicy. I see. Is it a meal or just a snack? It's more of a snack or a quick lunch kind of food. But you can pair it with fries or bread rolls to make it more filling. It sounds like a perfect snack to grab on the go. Yes. And it's also affordable, so you won't have to break the bank to try it out. Well, you sold me. Let's go grab some currywurst. Yes, let's go. I'm excited for you to try it out. Hey there. As a data mining engineer, I've been thinking about how we can develop an AI chatbot that learns on its own. That sounds interesting. That's where natural language processing comes in. We could use chat logs as input data and train the chatbot to recognize patterns and learn from them. Right, but what about the different nuances in language, like sarcasm or idioms? How would the chatbot be able to understand those? We could use sentiment analysis and machine learning to help the chatbot understand the context and emotional tone of the conversation. Hmm, that sounds like a good idea. But what about when the chatbot encounters a question it doesn't know how to answer? That's where we can integrate information retrieval techniques to help the chatbot find the answer from external sources. Ah, uh, got it. But how do we make sure the chatbot is not biased? We can use fairness metrics to ensure that the chatbot is not discriminating based on race, gender, or other factors. That's important. But how do we make the chatbot more human-like? We can use natural language generation to make the chatbot's responses more personalized and human-like. That's true. But how do we ensure that the chatbot is safe from hackers and attackers? We can implement security measures like encryption and authentication to protect the chatbot's data and prevent unauthorized access. Okay, that makes sense. But how do we know if the chatbot is performing well? We can use metrics like accuracy, recall, and F-measure to evaluate the chatbot's performance and fine-tune it accordingly. Right, I see now. 
But how do we keep the chatbot up to date with the latest information and trends? We can use web scraping and data mining techniques to collect new information and train the chatbot regularly. Ah, that makes sense. But how do we make sure the chatbot uses appropriate language and doesn't offend anyone? We can use language filtering and monitoring tools to ensure the chatbot uses appropriate language and doesn't violate any rules or guidelines. Gotcha. But how do we make the chatbot friendly and engaging? We can use chatbot design principles to make the chatbot more engaging and interactive, like using emojis and providing visual feedback. Okay, I see. But how do we make sure the chatbot is scalable and can handle a large number of users? We can use cloud computing and distributed systems to make sure the chatbot can handle a large number of requests and users. Ah, uh, that's great. Thanks for the explanation. No problem. Always happy to talk shop with a fellow engineer. Hi there. Welcome to our open house today. My name is Amy. I'm a real estate agent. How may I assist you today? Hi, Amy. I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. I'm interested in buying a house here on the Gold Coast. Can you show me around? Sure, we've got some great houses for sale here. What kind of property are you looking for? I prefer something spacious, with a backyard and a pool, preferably in a quiet neighborhood. Great. I've got a few options that might suit your needs. Do you have a budget in mind? Yes, my budget is around $800,000. Perfect. We have a beautiful property just down the street that's within your budget. Let's take a look. Wow, this house is amazing. It's so spacious and modern. Yes, it has four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a large backyard with a pool. It's perfect for families or for entertaining guests. I love the open plan living area and the kitchen is stunning. This could be the one. Yes, it's definitely a great choice. Let's talk more about the purchasing process and I can answer any questions you may have. Sounds good. What are the next steps? We'll need to do some paperwork and arrange a building inspection. Then we can move forward with the contract of sale and settlement. Okay, that makes sense. I really appreciate your guidance throughout this process. It's my pleasure to assist you, Brian. Is there anything else you'd like to know about this property or any others on our books? No, I think this house ticks all the right boxes for me. I'm excited to move forward with the purchase. That's great news. Let's work together to make it happen. Well, B, this fish market is amazing. I've never seen so much seafood in one place before. Yes, Tsukiji Market is the largest seafood market in the world. It's a must-visit for foodies. I can see why. There are so many different types of fish, I don't know where to begin. I recommend starting with some sushi. We can go to one of the many restaurants inside the market that specialize in it. That sounds perfect. What's your favorite type of sushi? My personal favorite is uni, or sea urchin. It's creamy and sweet, with a very distinct flavor. Sounds interesting. I'll have to try it. What other types of seafood should we try while we're here? You should definitely try the Teiko Tamago, which is boiled octopus with a quail egg inside. It's a popular snack in Japan. That sounds delicious. Can't wait to try it. And don't forget about the Tamagoyki, or Japanese omelet. It's a staple in any sushi restaurant. I love omelets. I'm sure this one will be amazing. It definitely will be. And since we're in Japan, we can't forget about the famous Kobe beef. It's some of the best in the world. Yes, I've heard about that. Do you have any recommendations for where we can try it? There are a few restaurants in the market that serve Kobe beef. I recommend trying it grilled on a skewer with some salt and pepper. Yum, that sounds amazing. We should definitely make a video to introduce these amazing foods to our viewers. Great idea. Let's plan to film at each restaurant we go to and give our honest review. Sounds like a plan. Let's get started. Hey, have you started preparing for the information certification exam yet? Yeah, I have, but I'm not quite sure what the best approach is. How about you? Well, I've been doing some research and I think it's important to start with the right materials. Have you checked out any preparation books yet? Hmm, not yet. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. I found that the official study guide is really helpful for understanding the structure of the exam and the types of questions you can expect. Okay, that sounds like a good place to start. What about practice questions? Practice is definitely important, but I think it's better to focus on quality over quantity. Make sure you choose questions that are representative of the real exam. Right, I don't want to waste time on questions that won't help me on the actual test. Any suggestions on where to find good practice questions? 
There are a few online resources that offer free practice questions, but again, make sure they're reliable. Another option is to attend a prep course where you can get expert guidance on which questions to practice. Hmm, I'll have to look into that. What about reading materials? Are there any specific articles or books you recommend? Yes, it's definitely a good idea to read up on the latest trends and developments in the field of information technology. I recommend checking out some industry publications like CIO or Computer World. Thanks for the tip. Do you have any other study tips you'd recommend? Well, it's important to practice time management skills, too. Make sure you're using your time effectively and not getting bogged down on one question for too long. That's a good point. I get easily distracted sometimes, so I'll have to work on that. How about taking breaks? Oh, definitely take breaks. Your brain needs time to rest and recharge. Just make sure you're not taking too many breaks or you'll lose focus. Got it. Thanks for all the advice. I feel much better about tackling this exam now. Hey B, do you have a minute? I have some questions regarding the system. Sure thing A, what's the problem? Well, I was working on a project last night and encountered some issues with the code. Can you help me out? Of course, I'm here to assist. Have you tried troubleshooting it on your own? Yeah, I did, but nothing seems to work. That's why I need your expertise. All right, let me take a look. Typing sounds. You know what, B, you're like a wizard with computers. I wish I had your skills. Thank you, A, that means a lot. But I think we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. That's true. By the way, do you remember when we had that system outage last week? It was chaos. I sure do. It was like the whole office came to a standstill. I miss the good old days of paper and pen. Haha, <laughs> don't even get me started on that. But seriously, we're lucky to have people like you who can solve these technical problems. And we're lucky to have people like you who can build amazing software with your engineering skills. We make a great team. Agreed, we're like Batman and Robin, except we're both superheroes. Haha, uh -huh, I like that analogy. Alright, I found the problem. It's just a minor bug. Let me fix it for you. Size and relief, thank you so much. You're a lifesaver. No problem, hey. That's what technical support is for. Hi there. So we've been tasked with improving the logistics monitoring system of our company. Do you have any ideas on how we can use IoT technology to achieve full logistics monitoring? Hey, hey, nice to meet you. Yes, I think we can utilize IoT devices to track shipment locations in real time. We could also use RFID tags to monitor item movements throughout the supply chain. That sounds great. But how can we ensure that the system is secure and that the data being transmitted is protected? We can use blockchain technology to secure and encrypt the data transmitted between devices. Also, implementing a security protocol to the network is important to protect the system from potential cyber attacks. Good point. How do you think we can visualize the data collected to make it more user-friendly? We could develop a dashboard that visualizes data collected. It could display shipment status, estimated delivery times, and any delays that might occur. I like that idea. What kind of IoT devices do you think we should use? We can use GPS devices to track shipment locations, as well as temperature and humidity sensors to ensure the products are stored in the right environment. That's very helpful. How long do you think it would take to develop this system? It will depend on the number of devices and components we need to use. But I estimate it could take around six months to develop and implement the system. Makes sense. All right, I think we've got a plan. Thanks for your input, B. I really learned a lot from you. No problem, A. Glad I could help. Let's work together to create an amazing logistics monitoring system that our company can rely on. Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001 data protection? Yes, I have actually. It's a standard that helps organizations protect their data, right? That's right. It's becoming increasingly important in today's digital world. Definitely. So, what do you think are some benefits of implementing ISO 27001? Well, it helps organizations identify potential threats to their data and implement controls to prevent them. Sounds like a great way to strengthen security. Do you think it's difficult to implement? It can be a bit challenging at first, but with proper planning and execution, it's definitely achievable. That's reassuring to hear. Do you know of any companies that have successfully implemented ISO 27001? Yeah, I do. One example is Amazon Web Services. They have a strong focus on data protection and have implemented ISO 27001. That's impressive. 
Do you think other companies should follow in their footsteps and implement it too? Definitely. Data protection is crucial in today's world, and ISO 27001 is a great way to ensure it. Agreed. It seems like a smart investment in the long run. Thanks for enlightening me on ISO 27001, A. No problem, B. Always happy to share knowledge and insights on important topics. Hey B, what do you think about the latest wireframes for the product interface? Hey A, it looks good so far, but I think we need to spice things up a bit. Agreed. What do you have in mind? How about we add a touch of color to the background? Hmm, that could work. What about the font? I was actually thinking of using a sans serif font, it's more readable and gives the interface a modern look. I like that idea. What about the CTA buttons, do you think we should make them stand out more? Definitely. Maybe we can add a subtle animation when users hover over them? Great idea. We can use CSS transitions for that. Speaking of transitions, what about the page transitions? Should we make them smooth? Yeah, smooth transitions always give a positive user experience. Exactly. And what about the images? Do you think they're eye-catching enough? I think they're good, but we could add some high-quality vector graphics to make the page stand out even more. Agreed. And how about the responsive layout? Should we optimize it for mobile devices? Absolutely. Mobile devices are becoming more and more important for users, so we need to make sure our interface looks great on all devices. You're right. And what about the overall aesthetic? Should we aim for minimalist design? Yes, I think a minimalist approach would work well for this project. We want to keep the interface clean and easy to navigate. All right, so we're going for a clean, modern, and eye-catching design. Sounds like a plan. Yes, and with our skills combined, I'm sure we can make this interface look amazing. Definitely. Let's get to work and create something awesome. Hey, have you heard about the recent cyber attack on that big corporation? Yeah, it's insane. It feels like the world is becoming more dangerous every day. Absolutely. It's so scary how vulnerable we all are online. I know, right? Honestly, I think we all need to take our cybersecurity seriously. Definitely. So, what are you doing to protect yourself? Well, I've been making sure all my passwords are really strong, never using the same one twice. Good idea. I've also been using a VPN to encrypt my internet traffic. Oh, that's smart. I've been keeping an eye on my bank account, too. Making sure there's no suspicious activity. Yeah, I've been doing that, too. Actually, I also recently updated all my security software. Nice. You're really taking this seriously. Hey, what can I say? I've got some important stuff to protect. Ha ha, fair enough. But you know, it's not just about personal security. It's about protecting the internet as a whole. That's a great point. We all have a responsibility to keep the web safe. Exactly. And hey, if it means we get to keep streaming Netflix without any interruptions, then that's just a bonus. Ha. Huh. Can't argue with that. But seriously, let's make sure we stay on top of this. Agreed. Thanks for the reminder, bud. Anytime. Now, back to binge watching our favorite shows. Hello there, B. How's your day going? Hi, A. Everything's good, thanks. How about you? Pretty busy, as usual. But we can't complain, right? So, how's the project coming along? It's going well, I think. I've been doing some research online and found some interesting ideas that I want to share with you. That's great. I'm always open to new ideas. What have you found? Well, I stumbled upon a TED Talk about creative problem solving and I think we could use some of those techniques for this project. I love TED Talks. Which one was it? It was by Tim Brown, the CEO of IDEO. He talked about using design thinking to come up with innovative solutions. Sounds interesting. Let's watch it together in our next meeting. Sure thing. Also, I wanted to ask you about the deadline. Is it still next Friday? Yes, it is. But we're making good progress, so I think we'll be able to finish on time. That's great to hear. I'm learning so much from working on this project with you. I'm glad to hear that. And don't hesitate to ask me anything if you have questions or need help. Thanks, A. Hey. You've been a great mentor so far. It's my pleasure. I was once an intern myself, so I know how it feels. That's comforting to hear. I hope to be as knowledgeable and helpful as you someday. 
Keep working hard, and you'll get there. B. Remember, every little bit counts. I will. Thanks, A. I appreciate your words of wisdom. No problem at all. Now, let's get back to work and finish this project strong. Dad, do you think I can hit a home run today? Of course, you can, son. You just need to swing hard and stay focused. Okay, I'll give it my best shot. Are you ready to pitch, Dad? I'm ready when you are, but don't expect any easy ones. I wouldn't have it any other way. Ah, uh, man. That was too fast for me. Don't worry about it, son. Even the best players strike out sometimes. Just keep your eye on the ball. Okay, I got this. Yes. That was a good hit, wasn't it, Dad? Absolutely. You're getting better every time we play. Laughing, next time, I'll hit it out of the park, for sure. I have no doubt about that, son. Keep practicing, and you'll be a pro in no time. Thanks, Dad. I love playing baseball with you. Me too, son. It's a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Hey B, what's up? Hey A, I'm doing good. Just a bit worried about DDoS attacks. Yeah, they can be quite nasty. How do we prevent them? Well, we can use firewalls and load balancers to block the malicious traffic. That sounds like a good start. But what about botnets? Hmm, we can't really prevent them. But we can detect them and block the IPs. Ah, uh, got it. And what about DNS amplification attacks? We can use DNS servers that have enabled query rate limits and use strict access controls. You really know your stuff, B. Thanks. It's all part of the job. I just hope we never have to deal with a massive DDoS attack. Agreed. But if we do, we'll be ready for it. Laughs, yeah, we'll be like the Avengers, but for cyber attacks. Laughs, I like that analogy. We'll be the Cyber Avengers. So, who's your favorite Avenger, B? Definitely Iron Man. He's a genius, just like us. Laughs, yeah, we're geniuses too. But we don't have a suit of armor, unfortunately. Maybe we should invest in some cyber armor. Laughs. Laughs, that's a great idea. We'll be like knights, protecting our castle from DDoS dragons. Laughs, I love it. Cyber armor for the win. Laughs, alright, enough joking around. Let's get back to the serious stuff. Smiling, alright, let's do this. Hi there, B. It's great to see you again. What have you got for us to try today? Hey, A. I've got a new cocktail that I've been working on. It's called the Blue Lagoon Breeze. That sounds interesting. What's in it? It's a mix of blue curacao, pineapple juice, and coconut cream with a splash of rum. Wow, that sounds like a tropical vacation in a glass. Let's try it out. Sure thing. Here you go. Takes a sip MMM, this is delicious. It's really refreshing and the flavors blend together perfectly. I'm glad you like it. I wanted to create something that's perfect for the summer season. Well, you definitely achieved that. I can see this being a hit with our customers. Thank you, A. I always try to come up with new and exciting drinks to keep things fresh. That's why you're such a great addition to our team. By the way, have you tried any new food dishes lately? Actually, I have. Our kitchen just added a new Korean-style fried chicken to the menu. It's amazing. Ooh, I love fried chicken. What makes it Korean style? It's coated in a sweet and spicy sauce made with gojujang, a Korean chili paste. Trust me, it's addictive. You're making my mouth water. Let's order some of that to go with our cocktails. Great idea. I'll put in the order right now. Cheers to new food and drink discoveries. Cheers. I'm excited to see what else you come up with in the future. Hey B, how's it going? Have you given any thought about how to design a highly available cloud architecture for our company? Hey A, I'm good. Yes, I have been thinking about it. We need to ensure that our architecture is resilient and can withstand any outage or failure. Absolutely. What do you think about having multiple availability zones in different regions? That's a great idea. We can also use load balancing and auto-scaling to distribute traffic and resources evenly. Yes, and we should also use redundant data centers to ensure data replication and backup. Agreed. We should also have a disaster recovery plan in place in case of any major outage or disaster. Definitely. What do you think about using containerization and Kubernetes for better orchestration and management of resources? That would be a great idea. It would give us more flexibility and scalability. 
Any thoughts on security measures? We should use SSL and encryption for secure communication and also have access control and monitoring in place. Sounds good. We should also conduct regular penetration testing to identify any vulnerabilities in our system. Absolutely. And what about cost-effective solutions? We can use reserved instances and spot instances for cost optimization and also monitor our usage and cost regularly. Good point. It's important to strike a balance between cost and performance. All right, B, I think we have a solid plan in place. Thanks for the discussion. You're welcome, A. Always happy to help. Good morning, B. Are you ready for our music lesson today? Yes, A. I am excited to learn more about playing the piano. Great. Let's start by reviewing the basics. Can you show me how to play the C major scale? Sure. Plays the scale. Perfect. Now, let's move on to some fun songs. What kind of music do you like, B? I like pop music. Great choice. How about we learn to play Shape of You by Ed Sheeran on the piano? That sounds awesome. Can you teach me the chords? Sure thing. Plays the chords and demonstrates. Now you try. Plays the chords. Wow, this sounds great. You're a natural, B. Let's try playing it together. Plays the chords while it plays the melody. This is so much fun. It sure is. Music is a great way to express creativity and emotions. Keep practicing and who knows, maybe one day you'll be a famous pianist. Ha ha, that would be a dream come true. Thanks for your help, A. Anytime, B. Let's continue our lesson next week. Keep up the good work. Have you ever tried bun cha? No, I haven't. What is that? It's a popular Vietnamese dish made with grilled pork, vermicelli noodles, and fresh herbs. That sounds delicious. Where can we find it? I know a great restaurant that serves the best bun cha in town. We should go there sometime. Count me in. Is it spicy? Not really, but you can add some chili sauce if you like. I love spicy food. Do they have vegetarian options? Yes, they do. They also have tofu and mushroom dishes that are equally tasty. Yum. I can't wait to try it. How do you eat it? You take a piece of grilled pork, dip it in the fish sauce, and mix it with the noodles and herbs. Sounds easy enough. Do we need to make a reservation? It's better to make one, especially on weekends. This place is always packed. Good to know. Thanks for the tip. No problem. I'm sure you'll love it. It's one of my favorite foods. I trust your taste. You've never failed me yet. Huh. Thanks. I hope I never will. So, when are we going? How about this weekend? Perfect. Let's make a reservation and bring our appetites. Deal. I'm already hungry just thinking about it. Hey B, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. How about you? Not bad. So, have you given any thought to our resource allocation problem? Yeah, I have some ideas. What do you think of having a centralized system for managing resources? Hmm, that could work. But what about the departments that need autonomy over their own resources? We can have a system where they can request resources, but it's ultimately up to the central system to allocate them. Interesting. Have you considered implementing AI to help with resource predictions and allocation? Absolutely. I think machine learning algorithms can help us optimize resource allocation in real time. That's a great idea. What about security concerns? We'll need to implement strong security measures to ensure data privacy and prevent unauthorized access to sensitive resources. Definitely. Do you think we have the budget to implement this kind of system? I think so. We'll need to do some cost-benefit analysis, but I think the long-term benefits will outweigh the short-term costs. Agreed. Have you thought about who will be responsible for maintaining and updating the system? We can hire a dedicated team for that or train existing staff to take on that role. Okay, cool. What about training users on how to use the new system? We can create user-friendly tutorials and offer training sessions to ensure everyone is comfortable using the new system. Sounds good. Do you have any recommendations for specific technologies we should use? I think we should look into cloud-based solutions for scalability and flexibility. AWS or Azure might be good options. Thank you for your insights, B. I think this could be a game-changer for our resource allocation processes. My pleasure, A. I'm excited to see what we can accomplish with this new system in place. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
we're bringing you some entertainment on this fine day. Are you ready for some fun? Absolutely. What do you have in store for us today? First, we'll warm up with something simple. I'll be juggling these balls while simultaneously balancing on this tall unicycle. Watch closely. Wow, impressive. How do you even begin practicing that? Lots of bruises and falls, but it's worth it for the show. Now, we'll kick it up a notch with some fire juggling. Don't worry, we have a safe distance from the building. Oh my, this is getting intense. How long have you been doing this kind of performance? I've been entertaining crowds for about five years now. It's hard work, but seeing people's reactions makes it all worth it. I can imagine. I bet you have some interesting stories from your performances. Definitely. Like the time I accidentally juggled a ball into the crowd and hit someone's drink. Let's just say, they were not happy with me. Oh no, that must have been embarrassing. But it's all part of the experience, right? Exactly. And now, for our grand finale, I'm going to attempt to ride this unicycle while balancing a chair on my chin. Oh my goodness, this should be good. Here goes nothing. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much for entertaining us today. Thank you for coming out and supporting live performances. Have a great day, everyone. Hey, have you been keeping up with a healthy lifestyle lately? Yeah, I have been trying to eat more fruits and vegetables. That's great. I recently tried chia pudding as a healthier snack option. That sounds interesting. How do you make it? It's super easy. Just mix chia seeds with almond milk and let it sit in the fridge, then top it with fruits. Yum, I'll definitely have to try that out. And have you been exercising at all? Yeah, I've been trying to incorporate more yoga into my routine. Yoga is great for both physical and mental health. I prefer running outdoors for my cardio exercise. Running can be tough on my knees. Any suggestions for low-impact cardio exercises? Swimming is a great low-impact option, or you could try cycling or a rowing machine. Thanks for the suggestions. I'll have to give those a try. No problem. I also wanted to recommend trying herbal teas as a way to stay hydrated. I love tea. Any specific types you recommend for health benefits? Green tea is packed with antioxidants, and matcha is also great for energy and focus. Awesome. I'll have to stock up on those. And lastly, I always try to remind myself to get enough rest because it's important for overall health. Agreed. Getting enough sleep can really make a difference. Well, it's always better to make small changes for a healthier lifestyle. Keep it up and we'll be feeling great in no time. Definitely, let's do this. Hey there. How's it going today? I'm doing pretty well, thanks. How about you? Not too bad, just working on some machine learning models. How about you? What brings you to the lab today? I'm here to work on natural language processing. We're developing a new language model that I'm pretty excited about. That sounds interesting. How are you training it? We're using a combination of neural networks and deep learning algorithms to build the model. It's pretty advanced stuff. Wow, that sounds pretty complex. I'm more of a simple regression model guy myself. Ah. Well, different strokes for different folks. So, have you run into any challenges with the language model? Yeah, one of the biggest challenges is dealing with ambiguity in language. For example, the word bank can refer to a financial institution or the side of a river. Yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. But I suppose that's where context comes in, right? Exactly. We're working on ways to incorporate contextual information into the model to improve its accuracy. That makes sense. Well, good luck with your NLP work. If you need any help, let me know. Thanks, I appreciate it. Same goes for you with machine learning. Let's conquer these models together. Hey there, B. How's it going? I'm doing great, A. Thanks for asking. How about you? Can't complain. So, what's the topic for today? We need to optimize our image processing algorithm. Do you have any ideas? Well, one thing we could try is implementing parallel processing. That's definitely worth exploring. How do you think we could go about that? We could use multi-threading to divide up the work among multiple processor cores. That's a great idea. We could also consider using a distributed processing system like Apache Hadoop. Good point. Another approach could be to use optimized libraries like OpenCV or CUDA. That's a good suggestion. We should also look into optimizing our algorithm itself by using more efficient algorithms like FFT or DWT. Absolutely. And we should also consider ways to reduce memory usage to improve performance. 
That's a great idea. We could also look at reducing the complexity of the algorithm to make it more efficient. Definitely. We could also use hardware acceleration like graphics processing units to speed things up. I like that idea. We could also explore using FPGA boards to speed up the processing. That's an interesting idea. And we should also look at ways to optimize the image preprocessing stages to reduce the amount of work the algorithm needs to do. Yes, that's a good point. We could also use machine learning to optimize the algorithm based on training data. That's definitely worth exploring. And we should also consider using cloud computing to scale up the processing power if needed. Agreed. We could also use containerization to make it easier to deploy and maintain the algorithm. Good suggestion. And we should also consider using compression techniques to reduce the size of the image data and speed up processing. That's an interesting idea. We could also use edge computing to reduce the amount of data that needs to be transmitted over the network. Yes, that's a great idea. We could also use data parallelism to divide up the processing among multiple nodes. That's a good suggestion. We should definitely explore all these options and see which ones work best for our specific use case. Absolutely. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Hey B, how's it going? Hey A, I'm good. Just trying to catch my breath after all this training. Yeah, we do work hard here. But that's the only way to get better. For sure. So, what's on the agenda for today? We're going to work on your footwork and agility. You ready? Bring it on. All right, let's start with some ladder drills. Drones, those are always killer. Ah, uh, don't be like that. It's all about technique and speed. I know, I know. Just give me a minute to mentally prepare. Laughs, take your time. Okay, I'm ready now. Let's do this. That's more like it. Good effort, B, keep it up. Thanks, A. But I gotta say, you're not breaking a sweat at all. Grinning, what can I say? I'm a professionally trained drill sergeant. Laughs, yeah, and I'm just a mere mortal. Hey, you're better than you give yourself credit for. Now, let's move on to some cone drills. You got it, coach. Smiling, that's the spirit. Let's get to work. Good morning and welcome to the Melbourne Museum. My name is Alex and I will be your guide for today. What brings you to the museum? Hi Alex, thank you for having me. I'm just interested in exploring the culture and history of Melbourne. That's great. Melbourne has a rich cultural history that is showcased through our exhibits. Are there any particular exhibits you're interested in seeing? I've heard a lot about the First Peoples exhibit. Can you tell me more about it? Of course. The First Peoples exhibit highlights the culture and history of Indigenous Australians. It includes artifacts, artwork, and stories that showcase their traditions and beliefs. That sounds fascinating. Can you show me where it is? Sure thing. Follow me. They walk to the exhibit. Here we are. The exhibit is divided into different sections. The first section focuses on the First Nations people and their traditions. Wow, these artifacts are amazing. What is this object over here? That's a didgeridoo. It's an instrument that has been used by Indigenous Australians for thousands of years. That's really interesting. What about these paintings? They are traditional Aboriginal art. The patterns used in the paintings usually represent the artist's personal story or clan. I love the colors and designs. This is such an eye-opening experience. I'm glad to hear that. The next section is about the arrival of Europeans in Australia. What can you tell me about that time period? Well, Europeans arrived in Australia in the late 1700s and the relationship between the indigenous Australians and the Europeans was often strained. The exhibit shows how this impacted their lives. It's important to understand both the good and the bad parts of history. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. And we have even more exhibits to explore. Let's keep moving. This museum is huge. I could spend hours here. Yes, there is certainly a lot to see. Is there anything else you're interested in? I'm curious about the natural history exhibit. Can we check that out? Definitely. Follow me, and I'll show you where it is. Here we are. This section focuses on the natural environment and animals native to Victoria. This is so cool. I had no idea there were so many unique animals here. Yes, the diversity of wildlife in Victoria is quite impressive. Have you ever seen a platypus before? No, I haven't. Well, we have one on display over here. 
It's a semi-aquatic animal that is only found in eastern Australia. It's so cute. I can't believe it lays eggs. Yes, it's one of the only mammals that does. And we have plenty of other interesting animals to see as well. This is such an informative and enjoyable experience. I'm so glad I came. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming to the museum today. Good evening, welcome to our hotel. How can I assist you today? Hi there. I'm enjoying my stay so far and was wondering if you have any recommendations for things to see or do in the area? Absolutely. One of the must-see attractions in the French Quarter is the jazz performances. There's a great show happening tonight at a nearby venue if you're interested. Have you ever heard of Preservation Hall? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a very historic venue where local jazz musicians play. It has a very intimate setting and incredible acoustics. You should definitely check it out. Sounds great. How do I get there from here? It's just a few blocks away from here. You can take a leisurely stroll over to it. Excellent. Thank you for the suggestion. Is there food nearby that you would recommend as well? Yes, there are plenty of great restaurants in this area. If you're looking for classic Creole cuisine, I'd recommend Antoine's. It's just down the street from the venue. Okay, that sounds perfect. Great. Let me know if you need any further assistance. Enjoy the show and dinner. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'll be sure to let you know how it goes. Wow, that was amazing. I had no idea jazz was so popular in the city. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Was the food at Antoine's good as well? Yes, it was some of the best Creole food I've ever had. Thank you for recommending it. You're welcome. Did you get a chance to explore the French Quarter further? Yes, I took a stroll around and saw a lot of interesting art galleries and shops. It's such a unique area. Indeed it is. New Orleans has a lot of history and charm to it. I hope you continue to enjoy your stay here. If you need anything else, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, and I will. Hey, have you ever tried sushi before? Of course. Sushi is one of my favorite foods. How about you? Well, I've had it a few times, but I'm not really an expert on it. Oh, no worries. I can show you the ropes. What kind of sushi do you usually get? Honestly, I usually just get the California roll, because it's the only one I know. Ah, that's the classic beginner sushi. Let's try something a little more adventurous like a spider roll or a rainbow roll. Hmm, I don't know about spider rolls. That sounds a bit creepy. Don't worry, there's no actual spider in it. It's just soft shell crab. And the rainbow roll is so pretty, you'll forget you're even eating sushi. All right, let's give it a go then. But what's the proper way to eat sushi? Well, you can use chopsticks or your hands. And don't forget to dip the sushi in soy sauce before eating it. Got it. And what's the green stuff that's usually on the plate? That's wasabi. It's a Japanese horseradish and it gives the sushi a little kick. Ooh, I like some spice. I'll have to try that. Don't go overboard though, it's pretty strong. And make sure to save some room for mochi ice cream for dessert. Mochi ice cream? I've never heard of that before. It's a small ice cream ball wrapped in sweet sticky rice. You're going to love it. Wow, sushi sounds like a whole experience. I'm excited to try new things. I'm glad I could introduce you to the wonderful world of sushi. Let's go grab some now. Hey there, B. What are you up to? Not much, just finishing up the ISO 27001 audit report. How about you? Same here. Have you started writing the closing report yet? Yeah, I have. It's always the most tedious part. Absolutely. But it's also the most important in ensuring the client understands everything. True. I like to start with a summary of our findings, then move on to the implementation plan. Sounds like a solid plan. What about the nonconformities we found? Those definitely need to be highlighted, along with proposed corrective actions. Agreed. Do you think we should include any visuals to make it easier to understand? Definitely, a few graphs or charts could be helpful. Good point. How about our recommendations? We should keep those clear and concise, but also specific and actionable. Right, we want to make sure the client knows exactly what to do next. Exactly. Well, it looks like we're on the same page. Let's finish up and get this report to the client. Sounds good to me. Thanks for your input, B. It's always helpful to bounce ideas off each other. Hey B, I heard that you have a lot of experience with cloud computing. 
I was hoping you could help me out with something. Sure thing, what's up? Our company is looking to move our application to the cloud for more efficient operations. Can you give me an idea of what that entails? Definitely. First off, it's important to choose the right cloud platform for your needs. Have you thought about which one you want to use? Not really, I'm not even sure what the options are. Well, there's Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, just to name a few. Wow, I didn't realize there were so many choices. Which one do you recommend? It really depends on your specific requirements. For example, Azure has great integration with Microsoft products, while AWS may be better suited for startups. We can chat more about your needs to figure out the best option. That makes sense. Once we choose a platform, what's next? We'll need to prepare the application for the cloud. This includes making sure it's scalable, secure, and easily deployable. Hmm, that sounds pretty technical. I'm not sure I can handle that. No worries, that's what I'm here for. I can help with the technical details and you can focus on the bigger picture. Great, thanks so much for your help. How do we ensure that the transition to the cloud goes smoothly? It's important to have a strong testing and deployment strategy in place. We'll also need to actively monitor the application to identify and fix any issues that arise. That makes sense. I'm starting to understand what we need to do. Can you give me an idea of the benefits that we'll see once we've made the transition to the cloud? Absolutely. Cloud computing enables greater scalability, improved security, and faster deployment of new features. Overall, it'll make your operations more efficient and cost-effective. Wow, those sound like some major benefits. I can't wait to see the results. Thanks so much for your help, B. No problem, it's my pleasure to help. Let's get started on making this cloud transition a success. Hi, Coach B. How's it going today? I'm great, A. Ready for some beach training? Absolutely. What's on the agenda for today? We'll be starting with some warm-up exercises, then move on to agility drills. Sounds good to me. Do you have any tips on how I can improve my footwork? Sure, practice proper form and always focus on your balance. Got it. What's next after that? We'll move on to some resistance band exercises for strengthening your core. Sounds challenging, but I'm up for it. What else do we have in store? Lastly, we'll do some speed and endurance drills to build up your stamina. Nice, I definitely want to improve my endurance. How long will this session be? We'll be here for about an hour, so make sure to bring plenty of water and sunscreen. Will do. By the way, have you tried any of the food trucks around here? Actually, I have. The fish tacos were amazing. Ooh, I'll have to try that. Thanks for the recommendation. Anytime, hey. Let's get to work. Interior designer, B, client. Client. Hello, B. Good to see you here. Hi, A. Nice to see you too. I'm excited to see what you have for our office interior design. Well, we have several options for you to choose from. Do you have any specific preferences or ideas in mind? We want to create a modern and comfortable environment that encourages productivity without being too sterile. What do you suggest? I see. How about incorporating natural elements like wood and plants into the design? It can bring warmth and freshness into the space. That sounds like a good idea. Should we go for a minimalist or a maximalist approach? It depends on your preference, but I recommend a balance between the two. We can use bold accents and statement pieces, but not overcrowd the space. All right. Can we also have plenty of storage space and functional furniture? Of course, we can customize the furniture and layout to ensure functionality and maximize storage space. That's great. What about colors? For a modern and clean look, we can go for a neutral color palette with pops of color in the accents and accessories. That makes sense. How much time do you need to complete the project? We estimate it will take about four weeks to complete the design and implementation. All right, that sounds reasonable. Thank you for your suggestions, A. Hey. We're looking forward to seeing the final result. You're welcome, B. I'm happy to work with you on this project. Let's create a space that you'll love to work in. Hi B, have you heard of ISO 27001 patch management? Hi A, yeah I have. It's all about managing security patches for software, right? That's right. It's important to keep software up to date to avoid vulnerabilities. True, but it can be a pain to keep up with all the patch releases. Absolutely. That's why it's important to have a proper patch management plan. So, what are some best practices for patch management? 
Well, first you should prioritize critical patches and test them before deployment. Got it. And what about non-critical patches? Non-critical patches should still be tested, but they can be deployed in a more timely manner. Makes sense. And what about third-party software? Third-party software should also be included in your patch management plan. Good point. Should you patch third-party software as soon as patches are available? It depends. You should still prioritize critical patches for third-party software, but make sure to test them first. Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this. So, how often should you review and update your patch management plan? You should review and update your plan regularly, at least once a year. Great advice, A. Thanks for the info. No problem, B. Always here to help when it comes to keeping our systems secure. True that, A. Let's make sure we stay on top of our patch management game. Hi there. How's everything on the database side? Hey, everything is going well except for the SQL Server performance issues we're facing. Oh, that can be a hassle. What seems to be causing the problem? It seems that the increased traffic on the e-commerce site is affecting the SQL Server's performance, leading to slow transactions. Hmm, have you tried optimizing the queries or doing some indexing? Yes, we have. We've also added more memory and optimized the storage, but we're still facing slow transactions during peak hours. I see. I think it's time to take a deeper dive into the issue. Mind if I take a look at your database schema? Not at all, that would be great. All right, I see some areas where we can improve the indexing and the query performance. Have you considered partitioning the tables? Partitioning? No, we have not. Can you elaborate? Partitioning is a method for breaking down large tables into smaller, more manageable ones, which will help with query performance. That makes sense. I'll look into it, thanks. No problem. Let me know if you need any help. Will do. By the way, did you hear that the company's planning a mini-golf outing next week? Yes, I did. I'm pretty excited for it. Have you played before? I have, but I'm not very good at it. I'm sure I'll lose terribly. Don't worry about it, it's all in good fun. My strategy is to just hit the ball as hard as I can and hope for the best. Ah, I like your strategy. It's going to be a great time. Hey B, have you ever thought of using machine learning to control smart homes? Of course, I've been working on that for the past year. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Tell me about it, man. I've been experiencing some setbacks myself, especially when it comes to energy consumption. Yeah, managing energy consumption is a tough nut to crack. Have you tried using reinforcement learning? Yeah, I have. But it doesn't seem to fit the bill. What do you suggest? Well, we can always try neural networks. They're pretty good for pattern recognition. That could work. But how do we get the data we need for training? We can use sensors all around the house, like temperature, humidity, motion, and light sensors. Makes sense. But what about fine-tuning the control algorithms? We can use a genetic algorithm for that. It's like natural selection, but for algorithms. Wow, that's pretty cool. But how do we ensure the system is secure and reliable? We can use blockchain technology to secure the system and ensure all communications are trusted. Blockchain? That sounds a bit overkill. But I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. You got that right. And with machine learning and AI, we can make smart homes more personalized and adaptive to people's needs. Yeah, imagine a house that knows when to turn on the lights, adjust the thermostat, or make you a cup of coffee. That would be awesome. We can even integrate it with virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa. Exactly, and with the rise of Internet of Things devices, the possibilities are endless. It's an exciting time to be in this field, no doubt about it. Couldn't have said it better myself, my friend. Let's get to work and make it happen. Hi there. I'm a food journalist and I'm excited to try out this restaurant. What do you recommend on the menu? Well, as a sommelier, I would suggest pairing the grilled octopus with a nice Sauvignon Blanc. It complements the flavors perfectly. That sounds interesting. I've never tried grilled octopus before. How does it taste? It has a mild flavor and delicate texture. It's definitely worth trying. Okay, I'll give it a go. And what about the main course? Do you have any suggestions? I highly recommend the lamb chops with a Syrah blend. The wine will enhance the rich, smoky flavors in the dish. That sounds like a great choice. Can you tell me more about this Syrah blend? Of course. It's a full-bodied wine with notes of black cherry and spice. 
It's a perfect match for the lamb. I see. Thanks for your recommendation. So, what do you think of the food here in general? The food is exceptional. The ingredients are fresh, and the flavors are well-balanced. I'm thoroughly enjoying this dining experience. I completely agree. The food presentation is also excellent, and the ambience is perfect for a romantic dinner. Absolutely. The soft lighting and cozy atmosphere make for a lovely evening. I'm glad we came here for dinner. I'm definitely going to recommend this place in my food reviews. I completely understand. This is definitely one of the best restaurants in town. I'm glad we share the same thoughts. It's been a pleasure tasting the food and wine with you. I hope we get to do this again sometime. Likewise. It's been a great experience. Let's definitely do this again soon. Hey there. How's it going with the market data analysis? Hey, hey. It's been a roller coaster ride, with new trends popping up every now and then. But we have some interesting findings to discuss. Great. I can't wait to hear all about them. What have you got? Well, we found out that people are more inclined to try out new products if they are either shaped like an animal or are flavored with fruity tastes. That's interesting. So, it's safe to say that we should focus on those products in our marketing plan. Absolutely, and we can also include some fun animal-themed promotions to attract more customers to our shelf. That's a great idea. Speaking of promotions, what about our current promotional offers? Is there any room for improvement? Actually, we could do with some fresh ideas in that department. Maybe a buy one get one free offer or a limited edition packaging could be worth considering. Sounds perfect. And to top it off, our market research shows that customers are looking for healthier options. So, we could include more organic and gluten-free products in our inventory. Agreed. And to make things even more interesting, we could come up with some viral social media campaigns to promote these new products. This is definitely exciting. Our customers will surely appreciate these new additions to our store. Thanks for all your hard work, B. No problem, A. It's always fun to dive into the market data and come up with new ideas. Hey, hello there. What are you watching? Oh, hi. I'm watching a movie with my dad. That's nice. What movie is it? It's a classic one called Back to the Future. My dad loves this movie. Wow, that's a cool movie. What does your dad think of it? He's so into it. He has to explain everything to me like I'm a time traveler myself. Huh. That sounds like a lot of fun. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I am. It's funny to see how people from the 80s imagined future technology. Absolutely. So, how does it feel to watch a movie with your dad? It's really nice. It's a great way to bond and spend some quality time together. That's sweet. Do you guys often watch movies together? Yeah, on weekends or whenever we have free time. What about you? Same here. My dad loves action movies though, so sometimes my adrenaline is pumping faster than my heart. Oh, really? That sounds exciting. What's the latest movie you watched with him? We watched John Wick last week. It was epic. Oh, I've heard of that movie. My dad would definitely like it. He sure would. So, are you guys planning to watch any other movies together? Yeah, my dad wants to show me the Indiana Jones series next. I've never seen them before. Wow, that's awesome. The Indiana Jones movies are classic adventure movies. You're in for a treat. I'm excited. Do you have any recommendations for us? Yes, definitely. If your dad likes action movies, he should definitely watch Die Hard. It's a Christmas classic. Ah, thanks for the tip. We'll add it to our watch list. No problem. Enjoy your movie night with your dad. Thanks, I will. Have a great day. Good afternoon, how can I assist you today? Hi, I have a bit of a legal situation that I need some help with. Sure thing, what is the situation? Well, my neighbor's dog keeps coming into my yard and causing damage to my garden. Oh dear, that sounds frustrating. Have you spoken to your neighbor about this? Yes, but they don't seem to care or do anything about it. I see. Well, there are a few legal steps we can take to resolve this issue. Have you considered filing a complaint with your local animal control department? No, I haven't. How would that help? Animal control can investigate the situation and potentially issue a citation or even impound the dog if necessary. It may also encourage your neighbor to take the situation more seriously. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Of course, happy to help.
Is there anything else you need assistance with? No, that's it. Thank you again for your help and advice. No problem at all. Have a great day. Hey B, have you heard about the ISO 27001 Security Requirements Specification? Yes, I have. It's a set of standards for information security, right? Exactly. It covers everything from risk assessment to incident response. That sounds like a lot to unpack. Do you know what the most important part of the standard is? Well, it all comes down to what's most important for your organization's security. But I think the risk assessment is key. Agreed. Without knowing what risks we face, it's hard to design an effective security plan. And once we identify risks, we can prioritize our security measures based on what's most important. Right. But what about the actual security controls? How do we know what we need to put in place? That's where the detailed requirements come in. They cover everything from access control to network security. Got it. But how do we ensure we're meeting all the requirements? That's where certification and auditing come in. We can have our security program audited by an external auditor to ensure we're meeting the standard. That sounds like a lot of work. Is it really worth it? Absolutely. Compliance with the standard can increase customer trust and help us avoid costly security breaches. Good point. I'm going to start looking into this more. Thanks for the helpful conversation, eh? No problem. Be happy to chat about anything security-related anytime. Good afternoon and welcome to Melbourne. Where would you like to go today? Hello. I'm just here for a short visit. Could you take me around the city and show me some of the famous landmarks? Sure thing. We can start with a trip to Federation Square, which is a hub for arts, culture, and events in Melbourne. That sounds wonderful. I've heard great things about it. How about after that? Well, we could head over to Flinders Street Station, which is the busiest railway station in Australia and renowned for its stunning architecture. Oh, I definitely want to see that. What else do you recommend? If you're a coffee lover, then we can't miss out on checking out some of the famous cafes in Melbourne. There's a reason why Melbourne is called the coffee capital of the world. I'm not a big coffee drinker, but I'll take your word for it. Is there anything else that's unique to Melbourne that we could see? Definitely. We could head over to the Queen Victoria Market, which is the largest outdoor market in the Southern Hemisphere. You can find everything from fresh produce to souvenirs there. That sounds like a lot of fun. I love exploring markets. How about after that? For something a bit more serene, we could visit the Royal Botanic Gardens. It's a perfect spot to relax and enjoy nature. Wonderful. I'm sure I'll enjoy that. Thank you for showing me around. You really know Melbourne well. It's my pleasure. If you need any recommendations for restaurants or nightlife, just let me know. Actually, I'm thinking of going out tonight. Where would you recommend I go? There are plenty of great bars and nightclubs in the city. If you're looking for something fancy, you could check out Eau de Vie, which is a speakeasy-style bar. Or if you're looking for a more casual vibe, there's Chapel Street with its diverse range of bars and clubs. Hmm, Eau de Vie sounds intriguing. I think I'll check that out. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem at all. I'm sure you'll have a great night out. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Melbourne. Hi there. How can I assist you today? Hi. I'm just wondering what are some good vitamins or supplements I can take to keep my body healthy? Well, it really depends on what you're looking for. Are you trying to build muscle, improve your immune system, or just maintain overall wellness? I think I just want something to maintain my overall health. Okay, great. A multivitamin would be a good place to start. It typically contains a variety of vitamins and minerals that will help support your body's needs. That sounds perfect. Should I look for anything specific in the multivitamin? You want to make sure it has a good balance of vitamins and minerals, but other than that, it's really up to personal preference. Some people prefer ones with more vitamin C, while others prefer ones with more iron. Got it. And what about supplements? Are there any you'd recommend? Again, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're feeling fatigued, a B-complex supplement can help boost your energy levels. If you want to improve your skin, hair, and nails, a biotin supplement may be beneficial. Interesting. What about other types of health products, like protein powders or probiotics? Protein powders are great if you're trying to build muscle or recover after a workout. As for probiotics, they can help maintain a healthy gut, which can have a positive impact on your overall health. Thanks for the advice. I'll definitely keep all of this in mind. No problem. Happy to help. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. 
Good morning, Mr. B. How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling fine. It's good to see you again, Miss A. So, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could play some board games or do some arts and crafts. Hmm, how about we play some checkers? I used to be really good at it. Excellent choice. I'll go grab the board and pieces. Do you mind if I ask you a question? How do you know how to play all these games and do all these activities? Well, I've been a nurse for a long time and I've worked with many different people who enjoy different things. Plus, I like to learn new things myself. It makes my job more interesting. That's great to hear. You certainly make my days more enjoyable. I'm glad I can help. Oh, looks like you're winning. You're still pretty good at this game. Ha ha, thank you. I haven't played in a while, but I guess it's like riding a bike. Exactly. Hey, have you ever tried painting before? No, I haven't. Is it difficult? Not at all. It's actually quite relaxing. Would you like to give it a try? Sure, why not? Lead the way. Awesome, I'll go grab some paints and brushes. We can start with something simple, like painting flowers. Sounds perfect. Thank you for being such a wonderful nurse and friend, Miss A. Ah, uh, don't mention it, Mr. B. It's my pleasure. Now, let's get creative. Hey, how's everything going in the bakery today? It's going great. We've sold out of our signature bubble milk tea once again. That's amazing. Today, I'm trying out a new recipe for Xylon Bayo. Care to taste test for me? Of course. I love Xylon Bayo, especially when it's fresh and steaming hot. That's what I like to hear. This batch is made with minced pork and shrimp filling, and I added some finely chopped bamboo shoots for extra crunch. MMM, the aroma is heavenly. And the texture is perfect, not too thick or too thin. Thanks, I'm glad you like it. What's new with the drinks today? I just made a batch of matcha latte with oat milk for a customer who's lactose intolerant. It turned out surprisingly well. Wow, that's impressive. How did you come up with that idea? I did some research online and found that many people prefer oat milk as a substitute for dairy milk in their drinks. So, I decided to give it a try. You're always so innovative. I think our customers appreciate that about us. By the way, have you tried that new peanut butter smoothie from the competitor down the street? No, I haven't. Is it any good? Personally, I think it's too sweet and heavy on the peanut butter. But, I can see why some people might like it. It's always good to keep an eye on the competition, though. Speaking of which, have you seen the latest trend on social media about pancakes that look like animals? Yes, I have. I was thinking about trying to make some for our shop. Do you think it would be a hit with our customers? Definitely. We could make some panda-shaped pancakes with chocolate chips for eyes and nose, and strawberry slices for ears. Or, maybe some piglet-shaped ones with bacon bits for ears and a whipped cream snout. That sounds adorable. You're full of great ideas, eh? Ah, uh, thanks. I think we make a pretty good team, B. I agree. Here's to more delicious and creative collaborations in the future. Hey B, have you worked with cloud deployment before? Yeah, I'm a DevOps engineer. Cloud deployment is my bread and butter. Great, I have a question. How do we deploy our banking application on the cloud securely? Well, for starters, we need to ensure that our cloud provider has robust security measures in place. Okay. And what about the application itself? Any specific security protocols we should follow? Absolutely. We need to encrypt sensitive data, implement access control, and use HTTPS for communication. That makes sense. How about managing updates and backups? We can use containers to manage the application and easily update and rollback versions. And for backups, we can use cloud storage. Cool. But what if there's an outage in one of the cloud servers? We can use a load balancer to distribute traffic across multiple servers, ensuring high availability. Got it. What about monitoring the application's performance? We can use monitoring tools provided by the cloud provider or configure our own monitoring system. That's good to know. What about cost management? How can we optimize our cloud usage? We can use auto-scaling to adjust the number of servers based on demand, use reserved instances to save costs, and leverage spot instances for non-critical workloads. Wow, you really know your stuff, B. Thanks for the insight. No problem, A. It's always good to have a solid understanding of cloud deployment and management. Agreed. This gives us a great starting point for our banking application on the cloud. Definitely. 
Let's get started and make this a successful deployment. Hi there. I heard that we're supposed to be designing an app for integrating online and offline retail sales. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. We want to make it easier for customers to have a seamless retail experience, whether they're shopping in-store or online. Okay, got it. What features do you have in mind? Well, we were thinking that the app should allow customers to browse products and make purchases online, but also include features that make it easy to find those same products in the physical store. That sounds like a good idea. What kind of features would those be? We were thinking about using location-based technology to help customers find the products they're looking for in-store. We could also include interactive store maps for easier navigation. Hmm, interesting. What about rewards or loyalty programs? Yes, we definitely want to include some kind of rewards program to incentivize customers to continue using the app. Maybe we could offer special discounts or promotions for customers who use the app to shop both online and in-store. Great idea. Would you like me to start sketching out some user interface ideas? Sure, that sounds like a good place to start. And if you have any suggestions for additional features or functionality, don't hesitate to let me know. Will do. I think it could also be helpful to include a chatbot feature that can answer frequently asked questions and help customers with any issues they might encounter while using the app. Ooh, I like that idea. And maybe we could also include some personalized recommendations for products based on customers' browsing and purchase history. Absolutely. This could help enhance the customer experience and encourage them to make more purchases. I agree. It sounds like we're on the right track here. Do you have any other suggestions for features we could include? Well, what about some kind of social sharing feature? Customers could take pictures of their purchases and share them on social media, which could help get the word out about our products and maybe even attract new customers. I love it. That could be a really fun and engaging way to connect with our customers. Awesome. I'll make sure to include that in the design. This is shaping up to be a really exciting project. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Thanks for all your help, A. Eh? Hey there, have you been on any vacations lately? Yes, I just got back from a beach vacation in Hawaii. Have you been to Hawaii before? No, I haven't, but it's definitely on my bucket list. How was the weather there? The weather was perfect. It was warm and breezy. I spent most of my days by the water, just soaking up the sun. That sounds amazing. What kind of activities did you do? I tried surfing for the first time and it was so much fun. I also went on a snorkeling tour and saw some amazing sea life. Wow, I'm so jealous. Did you try any local food while you were there? Yes, I had some amazing seafood and Hawaiian poke bowls. I also tried Spam Musubi which was surprisingly delicious. Haha, <laughs> Spam Musubi sounds interesting. Did you buy any souvenirs for yourself or friends slash family? Yes, I bought some traditional Hawaiian shirts and a few keychains for my friends. I believe in bringing back a little something for loved ones. That's really thoughtful. Next time you go, let me know if you need a travel companion. I'd love to go with you. Sure thing. Maybe we can plan a trip to explore the other Hawaiian islands. There's so much more to see. Sounds ideal. We could hit up Kauai or Maui next time. Can't wait. Me neither. Let's start planning soon. Good morning, driver. Can you take me to Wuhan, please? Sure thing. Do you have any preferences on the route we take? Hmm, not really. Just as long as we get there safely. No problem, ma'am. So, what brings you to Wuhan? Just visiting some friends there. How about you, driver? Do you like driving long distances like this? Oh, I don't mind it at all. Gives me a chance to see the country. Plus, I get to have interesting conversations with passengers like you. That's nice to hear. Do you have any funny or interesting stories from your experiences as a taxi driver? Let's see. Well, there was this one time where a passenger left their pet snake in the car. I almost had a heart attack when I saw it slithering around. Oh my. That's quite a surprise. Do you enjoy pets? Not really a fan of snakes, to be honest. But I've had some nice experiences with passengers' dogs and cats. They're always so friendly. Yes, pets can be great companions. Speaking of companions, what kind of music do you like listening to on the road? I enjoy a bit of everything, from classic rock to jazz. How about you? I'm more of a pop music fan myself. But maybe we can find some common ground with some 80s hits? Sounds good to me. Let's put on some Huey Lewis and the news. Perfect. I always find that music puts me in a good mood. How much longer till we reach Wuhan? 
We're about halfway there, so maybe another hour or so. Anything else I can help you with in the meantime? No, thank you. Just enjoying the ride. Great, glad to hear it. And if you need anything else, just let me know. That's what I'm here for. Hey B, have you heard about Professor A's class? No, what's so special about it? Well, it's not just any class. Professor A has a reputation for being one of the most entertaining and engaging professors on campus. Really? I've never had a professor like that before. Trust me, you're in for a treat. He's known for his hilarious anecdotes and his passion for the subject matter. That sounds amazing. I'm definitely looking forward to attending his class now. Just be prepared to take lots of notes. His lectures are so interesting that you'll want to write down everything he says. I will, thanks for the tip. Is he strict with grading? Actually, he's quite lenient. As long as you show up to class and participate in discussions, you'll do well. That's a relief. I always stress about grades. Don't worry too much about it. Just focus on learning and having fun. Thanks, A. I appreciate your advice. No problem, B. I'm excited to hear about your experience in Professor A's class. I'll definitely let you know how it goes. Maybe you'll want to join me in his class next semester. Haha, <laughs> who knows? Maybe we can start a fan club for Professor A. Hey, have you reviewed the risk assessment for the system development and launch? Yeah, I just finished reading it. Seems like there are quite a few potential risks we need to consider. What's the biggest risk you noticed? I think the biggest one is development delays. If we can't meet the deadline, then we may lose out on market opportunities. That's a fair point. But what about technical risks? Any concerns there? Well, there is a chance that there could be a bug or malfunction that could affect user experience. Ah, that could really damage our reputation. Let's make sure we test everything thoroughly. Agreed. And if we find any issues, we should work on resolving them as quickly as possible. Another thing to consider is cybersecurity. We want to make sure our system is top-notch in terms of security. Definitely. We should make sure our security protocols are in place and up-to-date to prevent any breaches. And what about financial risks? Could the cost of development end up being more than what we budgeted for? That is a possibility. We need to keep a close eye on our spending and look for ways to cut costs where we can without sacrificing quality. It's a balancing act. We want to create a top-notch product, but also make sure we stay within our means. Absolutely. And we should be proactive in identifying any potential risks and developing strategies to mitigate them. That's a good idea. It's better to be prepared than caught off guard. Agreed. With our level of expertise, I'm confident we can navigate any challenges that come our way. Right. And if we work together and stay focused, we'll be able to launch the system successfully and minimize any risks. Yes, it's always important to work as a team, especially when it comes to something as important as this. Hi, B. It's so good to see you in the park. What brings you here today? Hey, A. It's great to bump into you too. I was just admiring the beautiful flowers and feeling inspired to write something. That's wonderful. You know, as a writer, I often struggle with expressing my thoughts and emotions in a way that truly resonates with readers. How do you approach that challenge as a poet? Well, I think poetry allows me to be more concise and deliberate with words. It's like painting with language, creating images and evoking emotions that can resonate on a deeper level. That's a really beautiful analogy. But do you ever worry about being too obscure or abstract in your writing? Of course. That's always a risk with poetry. But I think it's important to strike a balance between being accessible and being true to your own artistic vision. That's a great point. And as a writer, I think it's so important to use the power of language to communicate important ideas and perspectives. Do you feel that way about poetry as well? Absolutely. Poetry can be a powerful tool for social commentary and self-expression. It allows us to speak out about issues that matter to us and connect with others who feel the same way. That's so true. And I think whether we're writing poetry or prose, it's all about finding the right words to tell a story or convey an emotion. Do you have any techniques for finding those perfect words? Well, for me, it's all about being observant and staying open to inspiration from the world around me. I might jot down a word or phrase that catches my attention and build a poem from there. That's a great approach. And speaking of inspiration, have you read anything lately that really moved you? Actually, I just read a collection of poems by Langston Hughes that blew me away. His writing is so powerful and poignant, and it really got me thinking about the importance of using literature to address social issues. 
Wow, that sounds incredible. I'll have to check it out. Thank you so much for chatting with me today, B. It was really inspiring. Thank you too, A. It's always great to catch up and share ideas about writing. Keep up the amazing work. Hi there. Welcome to Blue Mountain National Park. I am your hiking guide for today. Hi. Thanks for having me. I am a photographer and I am looking forward to capturing some amazing shots of this beautiful place. Oh, that's great. You have come to the right place. It's a moderately difficult hike, but the view from the top is all worth it. That's exactly what I am counting on. Can you tell me more about the trail and what we can expect to see? Sure thing. The trail is about 3.5 miles long and will take us approximately 3 hours to complete. Along the way, you'll see some stunning landscapes including waterfalls, lush greenery, and picturesque views. Wow, that sounds amazing. Do you mind if I ask how long have you been a hiking guide? I've been a hiking guide for over 5 years now. I love being able to show people the beauty of nature and take them on adventures. That's incredible. You must have had some interesting experiences as a guide. Definitely. I once saw a bear on a hike and it was quite exciting. Fortunately, we were able to keep a safe distance. Oh, I can imagine. You must have some great stories to tell. Yes, I do. But let's focus on the trail for now. We are almost at the top and you're going to be amazed at the view. The peak is just around the corner. I can't wait. I am ready to take some breathtaking photos. That's the spirit. The view from up here is absolutely stunning. You really get a sense of the size and beauty of this park. I agree, it's truly mesmerizing. Thank you so much for guiding me to this incredible place. It's my pleasure. Being able to share this experience with people like you is what makes my job so rewarding. Well, I certainly appreciate it. This is definitely going to be a highlight of my photography career. Hey there, I hear you're the blockchain guru I've been looking for. Haha, uh -huh, that's me. What brings you to the world of blockchain? Our finance company is looking at ways to improve our payment system. We believe blockchain could be the answer. Absolutely. Blockchain can be a great solution for improving payment systems. Awesome. So how exactly does blockchain work? Well, it's essentially a decentralized digital ledger that records transactions securely. Interesting. So how can we apply this to our payment system? By creating a smart contract that records payment information, we can ensure secure and transparent transaction records. That sounds fantastic. How do we make sure it's accessible on all devices? By developing a user-friendly interface that is accessible across all devices. Got it. And what about scalability? How do we ensure it can handle large amounts of transactions? We can use techniques like sharding and sidechains to improve scalability. Great. And how do we make sure this is compliant with regulations? By integrating compliance and regulatory protocols into the smart contract, we can ensure it meets all the necessary requirements. Perfect. And what would be the timeline for implementation? Depending on the complexity of the payment system and the level of customization required, it could take anywhere from a few months to a year. All right, let's get started then. This is going to revolutionize our payment system. Absolutely, I'm excited to get started on this project. Wow, these views are simply stunning. I can't believe we're in the heart of Tasmania's wilderness. Yes, it's always a breathtaking experience. The beauty of nature never fails to amaze me. Is it just us on this mountain or are there other people around? It's just us for now. It's great if you're looking to disconnect and recharge. That's exactly what I needed. A break from the hustle and bustle of city life. I hear you. Sometimes it's important to get back to basics and appreciate the simple things. Did you know there are over 3,000 lakes here in Tasmania? Yes, some of them are just magical. You can see the reflection of the mountains in the still waters. That must be a sight to behold. Hey, what's that furry little creature scurrying up that tree over there? Oh, that's a marsupial called a possum. It's a nocturnal animal, so it's probably taking a nap now after a long night of foraging. Ah, uh, I've seen pictures of them before, but never in the wild. This is so cool. Just another reason why this place is so special. You never know what you might encounter on an adventure like this. Hi, sweetie. What are you sewing today? Hi, Mom. I am working on this cute summer dress that I found on Pinterest. Oh, that sounds lovely. Can I see it? Of course. Here you go. What do you think? It's gorgeous. The color and pattern are perfect for the season. I'm glad you like it. Do you need any help with your project? 
Actually, yes. I am trying to sew a button on this shirt, but I can't seem to get it right. Let me take a look. Ah, I see the issue. You are using the wrong needle size. Here, switch to a thicker needle and it should work better. Wow, thank you so much. I never would have thought of that. That's what daughters are for. How's your gardening going? It's coming along great. I found some new plants that I want to add to the garden. Do you want to come with me to buy some? Sure, I would love to. Maybe we can grab some ice cream while we are out. Sounds like a plan. Do you want to finish up sewing first? Yeah, I just need to add the finishing touches. I'll be done in a few minutes. Okay, I'll meet you at the car then. Don't forget the pattern swatches for the garden. Got it. Let's go enjoy the sunshine. Hey B, did you see the new combine harvester we got for the farm? Yeah, it looks pretty impressive. But it needs some maintenance. That's why we're lucky to have you here, B. What's the issue? It seems like a belt in the transmission system needs to be replaced. I have a spare one in my toolbox. Great, let's replace it. By the way, have you ever driven a tractor before? To be honest, I haven't. I mostly deal with fixing the machines. In that case, you're in for a treat. Let me give you a quick lesson on tractor driving. Sure, I'm open to learning new things. First, you need to engage the clutch and shift into the lowest gear. Then slowly ease off the clutch while pressing the gas pedal. Okay, got it. It's similar to driving a manual car. Exactly. Now let's see how well you handle the plow. We need to prepare the field for planting. I'm up for the challenge. Can't wait to see the results of our hard work. That's the spirit, B. You know what they say, happy farmer, happy life. Ha uh, you got that right. Working in the countryside has its own charm and peace. Yeah, nothing beats the smell of freshly mowed hay and the sound of cows mooing. It feels good to be a part of an industry that helps nourish a nation. Absolutely. We play an important role in ensuring that people have access to nutritious food. Now let's go get that plowing done. Have you ever tried yakitori before? Yakitori? No, I haven't. What is it? Yakitori is a Japanese dish made of grilled chicken skewers. It's really yummy. That sounds interesting. What kind of chicken do they use? They use every part of the chicken, from the liver to the tail. Wow, they don't waste any part of the chicken. That's really efficient. Yeah, and it's also really tasty. You should try it sometime. I will definitely give it a try. How is it usually served? They usually come with a side of soy sauce for dipping. My favorite is the teriyaki flavor. Yum, that sounds delicious. Do they serve it with any sides? Yeah, they usually come with some grilled vegetables on the side. It's a really well-rounded dish. That sounds perfect for a quick and easy lunch or snack. Definitely. It's also great for sharing with friends over drinks. Oh yeah, I can imagine it being an awesome addition to a fun night out. For sure. Now I'm craving some yakitori. Let's go grab some. Yes, let's go. I can't wait to finally try it out. Hey there, how's work going? It's going all right, currently working on a new project with the team. How about you? Pretty busy too, but it's always good to keep the mind engaged. Speaking of, have you learned anything new in your role? Definitely, I've learned the importance of time management and effective communication. It's helped me a lot in building better relationships with coworkers and achieving goals. That's great to hear. One thing that's been on my mind is working with difficult personalities. Any advice? Yes, I think it's important to stay professional and focus on the task at hand. Don't take it personally and try to understand their perspective. It can be a challenge, but it's a great opportunity to improve interpersonal skills. That's good advice, thank you for sharing. Another topic, have you ever experienced burnout? If so, how did you deal with it? Yes, I have. I found that taking a break and engaging in leisure activities helped me to recharge. Also, reaching out to mentors and networking can provide a fresh perspective. Those are good ideas. Speaking of networking, do you have any tips for building professional connections? Definitely. I believe it's important to attend industry events, connect with others on social media, and engage in informational interviews. Building relationships takes time, but it can lead to great opportunities. Agreed, it's all about building those connections. Another question, how do you stay organized in your role? I use a combination of technology and old-fashioned pen and paper. I write out my to-do list and schedule in a planner and use apps like Trello to manage project tasks. 
Very practical, thanks for sharing. Shifting gears here, what's the biggest challenge you've faced in your career? I would say it's been learning to balance work and personal life. It's important to prioritize self-care and make time for hobbies and loved ones. It can be a challenge, but it's worth it. That's a great point. Lastly, any books or podcasts you recommend for career development? Yes, I recommend The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey and the HBR IdeaCast podcast. Both offer great insights and actionable tips for career growth. Thank you. I'll be sure to check them out. It's been great chatting with you. Likewise, always happy to share experiences and insights. Hey, B. Have you heard about the new project where we are supposed to combine software development and IT operations in the insurance company? Yeah, I did. It's all about DevOps, right? Exactly. As the project manager, I need your help to make sure that everything runs smoothly. What do you suggest we do? Well, we need to integrate our development and operations team first. Then we can focus on automating everything from software deployment to testing. Great idea, B. Automation is key. We need to minimize human error and speed up our processes. What about monitoring? Hmm, we should use tools like Nagios to monitor our applications and servers. That way, we can detect issues before they become major problems. Awesome. But let's not forget about security. We need to ensure that our applications are secure and our data is protected. Maybe we can use tools like Nessus for vulnerability scanning? Good point. A security should always be a top priority. With the right DevOps practices, we will be able to deliver high-quality software to our customers faster than ever before. I couldn't agree more. B, together, we can make this project a huge success. Definitely. We make a great team, A. Hey there, B. Have you been thinking about how to improve our ad company's website lately? Hi, A. Glad to hear you're already thinking about user experience. Yes, I actually have a few ideas. Awesome. Let's hear them. First, I suggest we simplify the website layout using only essential elements. I totally agree. Keeping things simple is always beneficial. Another idea is to ensure easy navigation between pages, reducing the chances of users getting lost or confused. That's definitely important. We don't want to frustrate users with a confusing website. And how about integrating more visuals like videos or GIFs into our website? It can make our website more engaging and visually appealing. Yeah, visuals can help convey a message and grab users' attention more effectively. A great suggestion, B. Thanks, A. Plus, we can also use a responsive design to ensure that our website works seamlessly across multiple devices. Absolutely. A responsive design is crucial for user experience across all browsing devices. Another important point I want to highlight is optimizing page speed. Slow loading pages can be a real turnoff for users. Yes, it's such a hassle when a page takes forever to load. Fast loading pages can improve conversion rates too. Exactly, A. And we must ensure that our website has great content, relevant, engaging, and useful content to keep users coming back for more. Good point, B. Great content is key to keep users interested in our website. Finally, we should conduct user testing and receive feedback from users to see how we can further improve our website. That's such an important step. We need to hear from our users to understand their needs and make smarter improvements. You're right, A. It's essential to put ourselves in our users' shoes. So, B, which of these suggestions should we focus on first? I would say we start with simplifying the website layout and ensuring easy navigation. Okay, that sounds like a good plan to me. Thanks for sharing these great ideas, B. No problem, A. It's always a pleasure to discuss improving user experience with you. Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001 Mobile Device Management, MDM? Yeah, I've heard of it. Why do you ask? Well, I think our company should implement it to keep our mobile devices secure. I totally agree. What are the benefits of using MDM? MDM allows us to control and monitor all mobile devices in our system. We can easily wipe data if a device gets lost or stolen. That sounds great. What kind of devices does MDM cover? It covers all mobile devices such as smartphones, tablets, and laptops. That's comprehensive. How does MDM ensure the security of the mobile devices? It ensures that all devices adhere to the security policies of our company. It also eliminates the risk of unauthorized access. Wow, that's impressive. How can we start implementing MDM in our company? We need the help of our IT team to set up the MDM system. 
They can also provide training to our employees on how to use it. Okay, that makes sense. How can we ensure that all employees follow the MDM policy? We can conduct periodic training and update our policies to make sure employees follow the guidelines. Got it. Is there anything else we should consider when implementing MDM? We should also consider the cost of implementing and maintaining the MDM system. It's an investment in our security, but we need to weigh the cost against the benefits. That's a good point. Overall, it seems like MDM is a great way to keep our mobile devices secure. Yeah, I think it's essential to keep up with advancements in technology and security to ensure our company's success. Hey, have you found a place to host the upcoming company meeting yet? No, not yet. Do you have any recommendations? How about the hotel conference room downtown? HM, that could work. Do you know how much they charge? Yeah, it's a little pricey, but it includes all the amenities we need. Well, we can't break the bank. Let's keep looking. What about the local community center? I'm not sure if they have the proper technology for our presentation. Good point. Maybe the university has rooms available for rent. That's a great idea. Let's check it out. Do you prefer a certain location on campus? We want to make it convenient for everyone, so maybe a central location would be best. Okay, I'll give the university a call and see what they have available. Great, and let me know the cost as well. We don't want to exceed our budget. Will do. Oh, speaking of budget, do you think we should provide catering or let people bring their own lunch? Hmm, let me think. I think providing food would make the meeting run smoother, but it might cost a lot. What do you think? Well, we could always ask attendees to chip in for the cost, or we could provide some snacks and refreshments instead. Yeah, that could work. Let's make sure we send out an email to everyone with the details. Agreed. And while we're at it, let's remind them to RSVP so we can get a headcount for the catering. Definitely. Oh, and we should also make sure the room we rent has enough seating and tables for everyone. Good catch. I'll double-check that when I call the university. Sounds like we're getting everything in order for this meeting. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Me too. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to discuss new projects and ideas. Hey there, B. Have you looked into any new tactics to optimize website traffic and conversion rate lately? Hi A. Yes, I recently started implementing some A-B testing for different website layouts and it's been showing promising results. Oh, nice. I'm currently in the process of optimizing our website's loading speed. Did you know that a one-second delay can reduce conversions by 7%? Wow, that's a significant impact. Another thing we've been working on is improving our call-to-action buttons. We changed the text from Submit to Get Started Now and saw a 25% increase in click-through rate. That's awesome. Have you considered implementing video content on the website? Studies have shown that including videos can increase conversion rates by up to 80%. Yes, we actually have a video on our homepage. We've also been optimizing our headlines and subheadings for better readability and understanding. Great to hear. How about implementing chatbots for customer support? That's another way to improve conversion rates and reduce bounce rates. Interesting. We don't have that set up yet, but it's definitely worth looking into. Thanks for the suggestion, A. Anytime, B. It's always a pleasure discussing website optimization strategies with you. Let's keep brainstorming for more ideas. Absolutely. Our ultimate goal is to increase website traffic and conversion rates, and I believe we're on the right track with these tactics. Good morning, B. How did you sleep last night? Good morning, A. I slept well, thank you. How about you? I slept fine too. Ready for another day of filming? Absolutely. I can't wait to see how our scenes turn out. Me too. I heard the special effects team is starting on some of the explosions today. Oh wow, that sounds exciting. Can't wait to see that. Yes, but let's hope everything runs smoothly. Safety first, right? Definitely. Speaking of safety, have they fixed the loose railing on the second set? Yes, the fixing team was able to take care of it yesterday. Thanks for checking. No problem. Hey, did you hear about the catering changes for lunch? No, what happened? They're bringing in a new chef from a fancy restaurant in town. We might be in for a treat. That sounds amazing. Can't wait to try it out. But first, let's nail these scenes today. Agreed. Let's make this a productive day on set. All right, let's get going. Lights, camera, action. Hi, Coach B. 
I'm excited to finally get to dive here in the Great Barrier Reef. Great to have you here, hey. Are you ready to dive into the wonders of the ocean? Absolutely. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. What are we going to do first? Well, first let's do a quick check on our equipment to make sure everything is secured and working properly. Sure thing. This is my first time using some of this gear, but it seems easy enough. Don't worry, I'll walk you through everything. Safety is always our top priority here. Good to hear. I wouldn't want to end up like a fish out of water, or in this case, a diver out of water. Haha, ha, that's a good one, hey. Are you comfortable with breathing through the regulator? Yeah, it's a bit weird at first, but I think I'm getting the hang of it. It's almost like Darth Vader's breathing. That's the spirit, hey. Now let's get into the water and start exploring. Wow, this is incredible. There are so many fish and corals down here. It's like a whole other world. Yes, the Great Barrier Reef is home to thousands of marine species. It's truly something special to behold. And the water is so clear. I feel like I can see for miles. Can we explore some more? Of course, we have plenty of time. Just remember to keep an eye on your air supply and stay close to me. Thanks for being a great coach, B. This is definitely an experience I won't forget anytime soon. My pleasure, A. Hey. It's always rewarding to see someone discover the beauty of the ocean for the first time. Hi there. As a back-end engineer, I'm always looking for ways to optimize our database's performance. Hey! As a database administrator, I feel you. Slow database queries can really slow down a website. Definitely. Have you ever tried using indexing on our tables? Yes, we do have indexes set up on our tables but we can also optimize our queries to make sure they're not constantly hitting our database. That's a great point. Maybe we can use some caching techniques as well. Absolutely. We could use tools like Redis or Memcake to store frequently used data in memory, reducing the number of queries to our database. Nice. Another thing we could do is to optimize our database schema. Removing unnecessary columns or tables can speed things up. Agreed. Additionally, we could split up our database across different servers to distribute the load. Good idea. And we can further speed up our queries by using inner joins instead of subqueries, right? Definitely. Subqueries can be resource intensive, whereas inner joins can be more efficient in many cases. Ah, uh, I see. So there are many ways we can speed up our database and make our website more responsive. Exactly. We just need to put in the time and effort to optimize our queries and database structure. Thanks for your insights, B. Let's start implementing these optimizations and improve our site's performance. Sure, let's get to work. Good morning, I'm the food inspector for this store. My name is A. Hi A, I'm B, nice to meet you. Are you here to inspect our food products again? Yes, I am. I need to make sure that the food sold in this store meets the standard requirements. Of course, we always make sure that everything is up to PAR. Is there anything specific that you're looking for today? Well, I'll begin with checking the expiration dates, then the packaging and the condition of the food. How are sales going? Do you see any new trends? We've had a lot of people come in looking for vegan and gluten-free products lately. We're also starting to sell more exotic fruits and spices. That's interesting. I'll keep an eye out for those products. By the way, I see that you have some fresh fish on sale today. How's the quality? It's been selling really well. Customers have complimented us on the freshness and taste. That's good to hear. Can I try some? Just kidding. But seriously, it's always great to see that customers are satisfied with what we have to offer. Absolutely. We take pride in ensuring customer satisfaction. Well, everything looks good here for now. Great job to you and your team. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We'll continue to strive for excellence in everything we do. Hey, have you ever tried kanji before? Kanji? I'm afraid I haven't. What is it? It's a rice porridge usually served in Asian countries. I love it. Really? What's so great about it? Well, it's a warm, comforting bowl of goodness. It's also customizable. You can add toppings like pork floss, century egg, or even peanuts. Sounds yummy. Do you have a go-to place for kanji? Yes, I usually go to a nearby Chinese restaurant but I've also tried making it myself. It's surprisingly easy. That's impressive. Do you have any tips on how to make it? Sure. First, you need to rinse the rice several times until the water runs clear. 
Then, add more water and cook the rice until it becomes porridge-like. Don't forget to stir it every once in a while. Thanks for the recipe. I can't wait to try it myself. Do you eat kanji for breakfast or dinner? You can have it for both. In fact, it's a popular breakfast item. But I prefer it for dinner, especially on a cold, rainy day. I see. I'll have to give it a try. Thanks for introducing me to kanji. You're welcome. Let me know how it turns out. Maybe we can have a kanji party. Hi there, nice to meet you. I'm a food blogger and today we'll be trying out the Swiss cheese fondue. Hi. I'm the chef behind this delicious dish. You've come to the right place. I'm so excited. Can you tell me more about the ingredients used in this dish? Of course. We use a blend of Swiss cheeses, garlic, and white wine. It's a classic recipe that's been passed down generations. This looks amazing. I'm curious to know how to eat this. Do we dip bread into it? Yes, that's right. Use a long fork and dip your bread into the cheese. The perfect bite should be a balance of bread and cheese. MMM, this is heavenly. The cheese is so creamy and delicious. What's your secret in making such a flavorful cheese fondue? Well, it's all in the quality of the cheese. Using the right blend of Swiss cheeses is crucial. But also, patience is key. Slowly heating the cheese and allowing it to melt evenly makes all the difference. I couldn't agree more. And let's not forget the white wine. It gives the fondue that extra tangy flavor. Absolutely. It's a perfect match. So, how would you rate this dish? I'd give it a solid 9 out of 10. The only thing that could make it better is if we had a bigger pot. Laughs, thanks for your feedback. We'll make sure to have bigger pots next time. Thanks for having me. I'll definitely be recommending this to my followers. It was my pleasure. Come back anytime. Hey B, I'm glad we get to work together on this project. Yeah, me too. What's the plan? Well, I was thinking we could start by mapping out the user flow for the website. Good idea. We want to make it easy for people to find what they're looking for. Exactly. And I want to make sure the site is responsive and accessible on all devices. Agreed. And I can make sure the design is clean and visually appealing. That's why we make a great team. So, what do you think of this color scheme? Hmm, I like the blue, but maybe we could try a brighter shade. And what about adding some contrasting colors? Yeah, that could work. And I was also thinking about incorporating some animations to make the site more engaging. Cool idea. But let's make sure they don't slow down the site too much. Right, performance is important too. Have you thought about how we'll organize the product categories? Yes, I've been researching some best practices. I think we could use a combination of drop-down menus and filter options. Okay, sounds good. And what about the checkout process? Any ideas there? Well, I think we should make it as simple as possible. Just the essentials, with clear calls to action. Yes, I agree. And we can include some trust markers, like security badges, to reassure customers. Definitely. And we'll also want to add some social proof, like customer reviews, to encourage people to buy. Great point. And what about email marketing? Should we include an opt-in on the site? Absolutely. We want to build a loyal customer base and keep them informed of our latest products and promotions. Got it. And we'll also need to optimize the site for SEO so people can find us via search engines. Right. That means using relevant keywords, creating quality content, and building links to the site. Agreed. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm confident we can create a great site that meets all our goals. I agree. Let's get to work. Hey, have you heard about the recent meeting in the finance department at the oil company? No, what's up? They discussed ways to control costs in manufacturing, transportation, and sales. That's important. Did they come up with any good ideas? Yeah, they talked about using more efficient machinery and renegotiating contracts with suppliers. Smart moves. Did they consider cutting personnel? Not really, but they didn't rule it out either. It's always a sensitive topic. You're right. So, did they mention any specific numbers? They mentioned a target reduction of 10% in overall costs. That's a lot to achieve. How will they manage that? They'll have to streamline processes, find ways to eliminate waste, and get more creative with marketing. It sounds like a challenge, but I'm sure they'll succeed. What do you think? Well, it depends on how committed they are to implementing the proposed changes. True. 
but as you said, it's a sensitive subject. They'll need to communicate well with everyone involved. Definitely. It's not just about crunching numbers, it's about creating a culture of cost consciousness. Agreed. And that takes leadership from the top. Absolutely. I hope the CEO and senior managers understand that. Well, let's hope for the best. Thanks for filling me in on this. Anytime. It's always good to stay informed about what's happening in the industry. Hey there. It's great to finally meet you. I'm excited to discuss our upcoming art exhibition. Nice to meet you too. Yes, I've been looking forward to this as well. So tell me, what ideas do you have for the exhibition theme? Well, I was thinking about doing something related to the beach since we're here. Maybe incorporating shells or sand into the artwork. That's an interesting idea. We could also explore the concept of ocean conservation and protecting marine life. Yes, that's a great idea. We could have artwork that raises awareness about the harmful effects of pollution on the sea. Exactly, and we could invite local organizations that specialize in marine conservation to participate in the exhibition. It would be a great way to bring attention to their work. I also love the idea of incorporating interactive installations for visitors to engage with the artwork. Yes, that would add an extra layer of dimension to the exhibition. We could have a virtual reality experience that simulates swimming with dolphins, for example. Oh, that's brilliant. I also know a few artists who specialize in marine life illustrations. We could showcase their work as well. That's perfect. We could have an entire section dedicated to illustrations of sea creatures and their habitats. And we could have a panel discussion with conservationists and scientists to educate visitors about the importance of preserving our oceans. Excellent idea. This exhibition could be a great opportunity to raise awareness and inspire people to take action. Definitely. I can't wait to get started on this project. It's going to be amazing. Agreed. Let's exchange contact information and keep in touch. We have a lot of work to do to make this exhibition a success. Hey son, do you want to play some baseball with me in the backyard? Sure dad, let me grab my glove and we can start. Great, I'll grab the bat and some balls. Are you going to pitch or should we use the pitching machine? Let's start with me pitching and see how it goes. Sounds good to me, but be careful not to hit me with the ball. I'll try my best, but no promises. Laughs, I trust you dad. All right, let's start. Throws the ball. Swings and misses. Strike one. Smirks. Concentrates and swings. Ball hits the bat. Nice hit. Smiles. Thanks, Dad. Let's keep going. Pitches a curveball. Swings and misses. Oh, man, that was tough. Don't worry. You'll get the hang of it. Okay, let me try again. Throws a fastball. Hits the ball. Home run. Proudly, that's my boy. Laughs. Thanks, Dad. I had a lot of fun. Me too, son. We should do this more often. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for playing with me, Dad. Anytime, son. Anytime. Good morning, B. Do you know if there were any incidents last night? Good morning, A. I'm not entirely sure, but I heard there was a robbery at a convenience store down the street. Oh, no. That's awful. We have to be more vigilant than ever now. Yes, definitely. But I must admit, my job as a cashier makes me a bit nervous sometimes. I feel like I'm always a target for thieves. I understand how you feel, but you know what they say, don't mess with a cashier who handles money all day, right? Giggles, true. But let's hope we don't have any incidents here. It's usually pretty quiet at this time. Yes, let's hope so. By the way, have you seen any suspicious individuals around lately? Not really. But I did see a guy wearing a hoodie and acting strangely earlier this morning. I think he just wanted to buy some snacks, but it never hurts to keep an eye on people, right? Absolutely. I'll keep an eye on him too. And if anything happens, just press the panic button under the counter and I'll be here in a jiffy. Thanks, hey. It's good to know we have each other's backs. That's what teamwork is all about, B. Speaking of which, have you tried that new energy drink we're selling here yet? No, I haven't. Is it any good? It's pretty tasty, and it gives you a boost of energy when you need it most. You should try it sometime. I just might. Thanks for the recommendation, hey. No problem. We have to stick together and look out for each other, both on and off duty, right? Absolutely. Hey, speaking of energy drinks, I just had an idea. Why don't we organize a charity run to raise money for a good cause and promote our energy drink at the same time? Smiling, now that's a brilliant idea. 
Count me in, B. Let's make a difference and have some fun at the same time. Hi there. It's great to meet another data enthusiast here. What brings you to the insurance industry? Hey, glad to meet you too. I'm a BI engineer and working on analyzing insurance claims and calculating risk probabilities. How about you? I'm a database administrator. I manage and maintain the insurance data, including the claims data that you use. Whom do you work with more often, claims adjusting team or the underwriting team? I mostly work with the claims adjusting team. We need to figure out the risk involved in insuring a policyholder based on their claim history. Oh, yeah. I'm familiar with that. I work with the actuaries team to perform retroactive analysis of policies and settlements. That's interesting. How do you use the data to predict the future patterns and risk probabilities? We use different techniques such as regression analysis, statistical modeling, and machine learning algorithms to derive insights from the data to predict the future trends. That's cool. What kind of software tools do you use for data management and analysis? We utilize various database management systems and business intelligence platforms such as Oracle, SQL Server, Tableau, and Power BI. Wow, that's a lot. Which one do you prefer the most? For performance reasons, I prefer Oracle but I also like the visualization options of Tableau. Yeah, I agree with you. What do you think about the future of the insurance industry in terms of data analytics and BI? I think there will be a huge transformation using IoT, AI, and blockchain technologies that will help us to collect, analyze, and gain insights from vast amounts of data. You're right. What other industries do you think can benefit from data analytics? Almost every industry can benefit from data analytics, including healthcare, finance, retail, manufacturing, transportation, etc. It's a fast-growing field. Absolutely. It was great meeting you. We should collaborate sometime to bring more value to our clients. Sure, that sounds great. Good evening, sir. Welcome to our restaurant. How can I assist you today? Bonsoir. I would like to try your most authentic French cuisine. Ah, excellent choice, sir. May I recommend our popular dish, the Coco Vin? It is a delicious chicken dish, cooked in red wine. Wow, that sounds amazing. I'll have that, please. Can you tell me how it's prepared? Of course. We use the finest ingredients, marinate the chicken overnight in red wine, and then slowly cook it with mushrooms, pearl onions, and bacon until the meat is tender and the sauce is rich. My mouth is watering just hearing about it. And what about for dessert? Our creme brulee is not to be missed. The custard is infused with vanilla and then topped with a caramelized sugar crust. That sounds heavenly. I'll have that too, please. Great choices, sir. I'll send your order to the kitchen right away. Would you like to pair it with a glass of our recommended wine? Yes, please. I trust your recommendation. May I suggest a glass of our Chateau Lafite Rothschild? It pairs perfectly with the Coco Vin and has a smooth, velvety texture with hints of black currant and spice. That sounds perfect. I'll take it. Excellent, sir. Your food and wine will be ready shortly. Is there anything else you need from me? No, that's all for now. Thank you for your help. It was my pleasure. Enjoy your meal, sir. Hi there, B. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm doing well. I was hoping we could talk about the project we're working on together. Of course. What's on your mind? Well, I was thinking about how we could make the park more visually appealing. Do you have any suggestions? I think we should focus on incorporating more flowers and greenery into the design. Maybe we could add some flower beds throughout the park? That's a great idea. We could also consider adding some water features or even a small pond. Yes, that would definitely add some visual interest. And speaking of water features, what do you think about adding a small waterfall? Ooh, I like that. It would certainly create a relaxing and peaceful atmosphere. Exactly. And we could also include some benches and picnic tables so people can sit and enjoy the view. Yes, and maybe even a small playground area for kids. That's a great idea. And we could add some climbing structures and swings to keep the children entertained. I like where this is going. It sounds like we're creating a beautiful and functional park that everyone will enjoy. Agreed. I think we're on our way to designing something truly special. Thank you for your input, B. I always appreciate your creativity and ideas. Likewise, A. It's always a pleasure working with you. Hi there, I'm the cargo representative from XYZ Airlines. We'll be dealing with your cargo for today. Hi, glad you're here. 
We have quite a bit of cargo waiting to be loaded onto your plane. Can you give me an idea of the process? Sure. We usually start by checking the weight and size of the cargo. Then, we make sure it's properly packaged and labeled. After that, we load it onto the plane. Sounds good. Do you have any special handling requirements? Yes, we need to know if any of the cargo is hazardous material or if it requires special temperature control. We also need to know if any of the packages are fragile. Understood. What's the timeline for loading the plane? We'll start loading in about an hour. It usually takes us about three to four hours to get everything on board. Great, we'll make sure all cargo is ready by then. By the way, have you tried the coffee at our airport? Not yet, but I've heard it's pretty good. You should definitely try it. The barista at Terminal 2 makes the best cappuccino. Thanks for the recommendation. I'll try to stop by before we take off. No problem. Let me know if you need anything else for the cargo. Will do. Thanks for working with us today. It's been a pleasure. Same here. Have a good flight. Hello there. I'm A, a patent lawyer. Nice to meet you, B. Hi there. I'm B and I'm a software engineer. It's nice to meet you too. So, what brings you to our office today? I wanted to discuss patent protection for a new software program I've been working on. Ah, uh, interesting. Our firm specializes in that area. Do you have any specific questions in mind? Well, yeah. I'm just not sure what qualifies as patentable when it comes to software. Good question. Software can indeed be patented, but there are certain criteria that must be met. What would those be? For one, the software must be novel and non-obvious. It should also not be a mere abstract idea, but has to have a practical application. Gotcha. That makes sense. Additionally, it's essential to keep your code confidential during the application process to prevent competitors from copying it. Speaking of copying, I've also been concerned with intellectual property theft. What can I do to protect my software? Well, you can start by applying for a copyright. This will give you legal ownership of your code and prevent others from copying it without your permission. That sounds great. Is this something you can help me with? Absolutely. Our firm specializes in both patent and copyright law. We can help you navigate the complicated process of protecting your software. Thanks so much. I feel a little more at ease knowing that I have legal protection. It's our pleasure. Don't hesitate to contact us if you have any other questions or concerns. Will do. Thanks again. No problem. Have a great day. You too.